your hands and worship Him. Lord, you are glorious, fearful in praises. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the worship. Lord, I thank you for that which you will do tonight to the glory of your name. Thank you because you will heal the sick. Thank you because you will liberate men from the bondage of darkness. Thank you because your word will come with power. And then it will cause us to rise beyond our present levels. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'd like you to just pray in one minute and say, Lord, affect my life in a powerful way tonight. Please make sure you pray. Affect my life in a very powerful way. In a very powerful way. I have come inside and outside. The Holy Ghost is everywhere. Say, Lord, affect my life in a very powerful way. Shalabaka prada katabala daba. Make sure you are praying. Kambrada kabala daba shata parada ba. Lambrete ke parada bala daba kata prada kesele bala ra. Kampo shata bala kapris kabala kari ada bala daba ski branda kari ada. Now the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Say, Lord, let Your Word come with fire. Mampa kalabo shata bali akata prada kene bala ra. Branda prate kalani ambras tabala gada ba. Pray in the spirit as you open up your heart. Libala da 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 bo, shata ba kapra da gada bala da bo. My heart is open. Shata ba talamanda krapa da kata bala da ba. Raka pros kapadi ana bala da bo, kapres kalemos. Embros kapalam pres ta kapros kalada da bo. Make sure you are praying. Say, Lord, I'll never remain the same. I'll never remain the same. After this meeting tonight, change me. Give me an encounter. Affect my life. Breathe on me. As I look to you for life. Affect my life. Breathe on me. As I look to you for life, affect my life. Breathe on me. Sing it from your heart. Affect my life. Breathe on me. Sing it from your heart. Hey, affect my life. Breathe on me. As I look to you for life. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place. 
lifts up Sing Holy Ghost, just the voices. Holy Ghost, let it be a cry from your spirit. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, you are the hope. Take your place in my life. Take your place. Take your place. Tell him, take your place in my life. Take your place. One more time, just the voices. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. I like you to sing this song from the depths of your heart. Because when the Holy Ghost takes control of a life in a powerful way, he can turn you into a, a wonder to your world. Take your place. That's our cry tonight. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place. Hallelujah. Listen, let me tell you something. When you are in the presence of God, it's important to be conscious that not only is the Holy Ghost a person, there is an atmosphere. Are you listening to me? It's, it's not just the presence of a personality. There is an atmosphere. And whoever is within the circumference of that atmosphere is able to tap into the things of the Spirit. It's not just a personality. It's an atmosphere that words cannot explain. That's the atmosphere that creates miracles. It's the atmosphere that releases power. It's the atmosphere that brings wisdom. It's the atmosphere that causes the word of God to come alive. It's not just about the English. It's not just a, pre a person. There is an atmosphere. That's why we invoke his presence in worship. It's an atmosphere. So every time you are in his presence, the Bible says, Now, the Lord is that spirit. And where that spirit of the Lord is, any circumference, where that spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. He said, man, we all, with unveiled face, beholding the glory of God as in a mirror, it says we are changed. Now arise, O oh Lord, come to your resting place, you and the ark of your might. Then we will rejoice as we're crowned in your righteousness. Celebrate Hallelujah He's changing everything In obedience to Christ It's in obedience to Christ In obedience to Christ He's bringing every sick body In obedience to Christ in obedience to Christ Say he's bringing my life In obedience to Christ In obedience to Christ In obedience to Christ He's bringing our lives in obedience to Christ In obedience to Christ Hallelujah I didn't plan to teach along the area of healing. Praise the Lord. But right from when I was outside, as I stepped in, many times I know that God heals people by the presence of angels. But then I just discerned that the Lord was going to heal and to bless and to touch people. Hallelujah. And to grant a quickening and while I sat down quietly there, while I was about to come up, Jangfa was just telling me how that he saw the angel of the Lord to heal, to bless. Listen, brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. With all humility, 
Kodnonia is not an ordinary service. It's, you can lose a lot of things when you are not sensitive in the spirit. Every time you come here, many things are happening at the same time. Impartation, wisdom, doors are being opened, others are being shut, destinies are transformed graces and anointings are coming upon people so you must be conscious don't just come sitting in a no this is not your church service on sunday so don't just come if you are sick here don't don't just sit down wondering oh can i be healed no i'm telling you even if we are teaching on relationship the holy ghost responds to the hunger of his people so every time you are coming the bible says for without faith it is impossible to please god he said for he that cometh unto god you came here barren we can be talking about something and the holy ghost just walks up to you and says you are too hungry for me to leave you the way you came hallelujah so i'd like you to be conscious of the presence of healing angels i'm not just talking about emotional healing real healing and when you hear words like this when they are declared they activate the manifestation of the angelic because that's what god wants to do the bible says let it be done in the earth as it is seen in the heavens and so when you declare that which god wants to do in the earth it permits the activities of angels for the bible says are they not ministering spirits sent to minister to they that be the heirs of salvation hallelujah praise the lord you don't come here with burdens and be wondering will God lift them are you joking God is mighty God is able you get information you get revelation the Bible says rule in the midst of your enemies not in their absence it takes light I've shared it again and again the Bible says and God made many lights but there were two great lights one light empowered men to rule in the day and another empowered men to rule in the night and if that light enters you you will rule both in the day and in the night the bible says they know not neither do they understand they grope in darkness and so the earth is out of course have i not said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high he said but you shall die like men, men and fall like one of these princes So don't just come for the service wandering around being distracted. Let your spirit be focused because the Holy Ghost is everywhere to bless. In one night, the Lord can turn your story. In one night, you may be in the crowd there, but an anointing, see, let me tell you, he said, I have found my servant David. He didn't tell us where he found him. I have found my servant. Many years ago, when I go for meetings like this, lost in the crowd, the preacher will just be talking as I'm talking now. And many people were just joking, but I believed. I said, Lord, I'm that person that preacher is talking about. Today, you see the fulfillment of the word. Some of you will hear and just be laughing. Take seriously every time. God is not doing the same thing. I tell you, there is enough grace and power. And if you catch this grace, you will run with the spirit of Elijah. See, there is an anointing. There is a revelation that can cause a man to arise to a place of grace. I pray that God will help you see my heart as I preach. There is, you can catch a fire. You can catch knowledge. You can catch insight. It's of the Holy Ghost. It's not of men. It's an auction. It flows from the depth of fountain. Your spirit is deeper than your body looks. I tell you, if you allow the life of God to touch that fountain, no matter who you are, no matter how weak you are, he said, weak men came to David to the cave of Adullam. They came to the cave. He produced warriors out of them. One of them became powerful. He killed mighty men that the sword cleaved to his hand. It's by the power of the Holy Ghost everything you see in this place is an unction he said it's not about trial and error he said you have an unction from the holy one be 
Peter said, such as I have. A man can know he has something. Such, if you don't have it, you don't have it. There is no guesswork. This is not mental manipulation. This is working under an open heavens. There is a dimension of work with the spirit that you can have. And this is what we seek for your spirit to contact. I pray that God will open my heart for you to understand how that I desire that these secret things that belong to God be communicated unto you. I tell you, you will break barriers, you will shatter limits, you will walk like a God upon the earth. He said, Have I not said ye are God? I challenge your spirit tonight. There's more God can do with you. This is not the best there's more he can do if you will give him your attention if you will take serious you don't need to be great he can take you as you are you don't need to be inside you may be outside he can take hold of your life forget about the little you know or you don't know just open your heart say lord i don't know and i humble myself change me and the power of the holy ghost will pick you in a flight in the spirit and when he's done with you you will be nothing short of a wonder that's what he did with our lives lord let none of our services ever be ordinary Hallelujah. See, brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. If I had the opportunity to hear what many of you are hearing many years in my life, I promise you, I would have been ten times greater than I am today. The Bible says they had the word just like we did. If you don't receive the word and pay attention, you will pay for it tomorrow. Every day it gets harder. The Bible says in the days of Samuel, when the word of God was cast, it will not always be at a platter of gold. A day will come, you will have to trade a lot of things for it. Get it now. He said, do not wisdom cry. Crying in the city for as many who will desire her. He said, get wisdom. Get understanding exalt her and she will promote you a crown of glory an ornament of glory she will bring upon thy head when thou dost embrace her he said wisdom is the principal thing dear forget wisdom said the labor of the fool weary at him not because there is no way he does not know the way to the city hallelujah God bless you. Please be seated. Let's save time. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Ephesians 2. We have to run. I want us to finish early today. Thank you, Jesus. Never take for granted what you are receiving. Many of you get so familiar. But I commend as many of you who come every week with a hunger. Because you know that God is doing something in your life. Thank you. One of the mysteries that will never stop amazing me is how God can turn an ordinary man into a sign and a wonder. Listen, brothers and sisters, if it were by qualification, some of us will not be in ministry. Hallelujah. But God knows how to take the foolish things and the basest of all things. That's what he's doing with your life. Hallelujah. If you 
if you don't study what God is doing in your life you will not even notice you are growing hallelujah and for many of you you will get to a point in your life where you will not have the luxury to sit down like this again the Bible says the angel tapped Elijah he said eat for the journey is far he ate and he slept again the angel tapped him he said you don't know how far you are going eat and the Bible says when he ate he went in the strength of that bread 40 days journey in other words there are some of you that what you are receiving now in your spirit you will get to positions where people cannot access you easily you will get so busy serving the nation or doing that which God has called you to do you will not have any time but in your secret heart some of you the Holy Ghost will replace some of these messages you will hear it again when you want to treat people in a wrong way God will say remember the kingdom series will begin to ring in your mind many of you may not notice what the Holy Ghost is doing but let me tell you something friends Paul speaking to his son Timothy in the gospel he said meditate on these things he said give yourself wholly to them eventually your profiting will appear unto all hallelujah when you sow a seed and you pour water sometimes it will take a while you may not know that something is happening one day you will wake up in the morning and suddenly you will see a sign that there is growth a few years after you will look at that same tree and many will come to find shelter this is the mystery of the spiritual man that you start small small in the kingdom at any level you can be received you can start small let there be a determination in your heart that every time I come for koinonia listen if you stop getting blessed stop coming don't waste your time I'm telling you you won't go to hell but you do something else with your time hallelujah we're very serious about what God has given us that's why we don't have time for unnecessary jokes we get to the business of the day because we know that there are certain destinies if God does not step in Satan will make a shipwreck of them there are many of you who are coming here with situations that are a matter of life and death we cannot be joking hallelujah I want us to hurry up I promised us that we'll try to maintain the time Koinonia is not the kind of meeting that you can do in two or three hours hallelujah I wish we had an auditorium of our own old meetings is a is a lot is see these are spiritual syllables we are covering are you following me now and sometimes when I see that which God wants to bring we are lagging behind we meet only once in a week take advantage of it hallelujah even if we met three or four times in a week it will not be enough I'm telling you if you know the urgency of what God wants to make out of your life you will make the he said redeeming the time because the days are evil thank you Jesus once again Lord there is only one Lord in this place it's not Joshua Selman it's not any minister but the King of Kings we only live to serve your majesty let every pride be nailed to the cross let every tendency for vain glory be nailed to the cross we are not ashamed to declare that we are your servants tonight Lord I pray that you move through me and bless your people our hearts are opened in the name of Jesus break every pride break every flesh break every tendency of the human spirit and soul to interrupt that which you want to do let your people be blessed in the name of Jesus Ephesians 2 10 tonight I want you to listen very carefully there are not many messages I tell people to listen to but tonight's message will bless you I'm sharing tonight on the price for a glorious destiny the price for a glorious destiny I know that we have one more one more session to cover for the full gospel series but we'll take that another time be conscious of the presence of God as we minister 
Ephesians 2 verse 10 quickly anybody thank you Jesus have you wondered why please look up have you wondered why in life certain people emerge so victorious glorious with enviable destinies hallelujah while others live as failures in life hallelujah i've always wondered is it that god made some people failures is it that some people were destined to be failures hallelujah while the world is celebrating the investments of god in others other people just joy they are at the lower levels of life they make no impact they don't live out why they were born tonight i pray that this message will challenge you in the name of the lord jesus christ the price for a glorious destiny write this down the word destiny write destiny please make sure next time when you're coming you hold something to write with if you if your neighbor is not writing you can help them please the paper viral just share with someone or if you have a phone you can use your notepad or something or if you can just have it no problem you can get the teaching later destiny now the word destiny is an interesting word it means a predetermined future very simply the word destiny means a future that has been predetermined hallelujah a future that has been predetermined Ephesians 2 verse 10 anyone yes please very loud for we are his work for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus created in Christ Jesus unto good works unto good works which God had before ordained which God had before ordained that we should walk that we should walk in them thank you sir he said for we are what his workmanship we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus that we should walk unto good works to walk in a path that has been foreordained he told jeremiah in chapter one he said right from when you were in your mother's womb i knew you formed you called you ordained you to be a prophet unto the nations jeremiah 29 verse 11 says for i the thoughts that i think towards you said the lord he said they are thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you to what an expected end that means i had an expectation hallelujah are you listening to me so the word destiny this is so important the word destiny means a predetermined future predetermined by who god god the bible says we existed in god in eternity hallelujah this is very very important many people do not live to hear these kinds of teachings and they become failures in life they are being born again notwithstanding i'd like you to say after me i have a destiny say it say i have a destiny say it confidently i have a destiny say i was born for a reason let's see some facts about destiny clearly number one facts about destiny every man was born for a reason every man this is the first point i want you to know tonight every man those who serve the great and the great every man according to god's predeterminate counsel every man was born for a reason i don't care how you came whether it was as a result of one harlot meeting another man is irrelevant hallelujah one more time say i have a destiny what you are saying is i have a predetermined future say i'm not a biological accident i know many of you are used to just say it we are going on a journey tonight every man was born for a reason your purpose for existence is the problem you were created to solve 
the solution that God put in you to reveal to your world your purpose in life what problem were you created to solve what solution look around the world we are benefiting from solutions that have been provided to mankind men and women walked upon the earth in ministry in every area of life and they offered solutions to their generations your general you for are you getting blessed tonight so number one every man was born for a reason debunk that demonic statement that you do not have a destiny i don't care what has happened to you I don't care what satan has told you can i tell you something even the herbalists and the native doctors and those who sell their soul to the devil have a destiny and a purpose in christ hallelujah fact number two your destiny has been predetermined by god your destiny is not an ambition your destiny is not an ambition an ambition is a desire a craving of something or someone you want to become that's not destiny your destiny has been predetermined listen to me but it takes your choices and decisions to enter into it or lose it your destiny has been predetermined by god but it is a sum total of your choices in life and the decisions that you take he said i set before thee this day blessing and cursing life and death but here's my advice he said what choose life choose life so that you may live fact number three destiny can be aborted this is the painful thing about destiny destiny can be aborted in other words god can earmark someone's life and the man comes here on earth spends 70 years 80 years even a hundred years or more and not locate his destiny at all not even leave it may god forbid that any one of us will just walk through the earth and be a liability to this generation hallelujah destiny is an important thing listen let me tell you something when you find your place in destiny that's where your blessing is that's where your relevant is there is no competition it's a realm that only you exist you see the reason why many people fight tear themselves do everything they do not even know that they have a predetermined future and if they do they don't even know how to get there and tonight my job is to guide us into not just an understanding but an experiential walking the price i made up my mind long time ago that my generation will hear my voice when i said that you were not there when i said that nobody was there but today by the grace of god hallelujah when you hear certain names billy graham dr miles munro Mike Mudok, Bishop Oyedepo, Obama. Hallelujah. When you hear certain names, they are associated with greatness. These were men who, who grew in all kinds of unfavorable conditions. Hallelujah. Men and women who shook their generations. Read through the Bible. Run from Genesis to Revelation. Moses abraham isaac jacob joshua the prophets jesus himself paul the apostle every time you hear this name you tag an aspect of greatness i pray that tomorrow your name will be associated to greatness the bible says we have been preordained by god please listen so why why do people end up becoming failures in life i asked the lord this question and i was shocked he gave me only two reasons why do people end up becoming failures in life 
someone who was destined to be a great apostle a great prophet a great teacher a great evangelist how come a man can have such a beautiful predetermined destiny and not even leave it do you realize that there was a prophetic grace upon jacob he never used it he never worked with it it was until he was at the point of death he began to bless his children and you hear the prophecy that came out of him this was this was a grace and an unction that he would have used in his youth hallelujah have you not heard of people who at age 80 or 70 they finally give their heart to the lord and within the remaining time they begin to put pressure on destiny listen let me tell you something brothers and sisters write this scripture down and never forget it for the rest of your life lamentations 327 he said it is good that a man bear his yoke in his youth it is good that a man bear his yoke in other words the bible says the glory of the young man is his strength pay the price now don't pay the price when you do not have strength again why people including christians end up becoming failures in life number one i want you to listen with an open heart number one excuses please write it quickly and look up because i want to talk about it excuses this is the number one reason why many people become failures in life and i don't want you to be victims of that excuses we live in a world where many people many people believe that their success depends on others and not themselves hallelujah there are many angry people around the world in africa in nigeria giving all kinds of ridiculous excuses why god cannot use them excuses why they are drinking and smoking excuses why their lives are the way they are excuses not taking responsibility for their lives let me show you an interesting scripture proverbs 20 verse 4 proverbs 20 verse 4 let's hurry up i want this i want this word to enter your spirit tonight proverbs 20 verse 4 anyone yes sir 20 verse 4 the sluggard will not plow by reason of the cold he said the sluggard will not plow the land why what is his excuse he said there is cold therefore shall he beg in harvest therefore shall he beg in harvest and have nothing and have nothing this is talking about um, fruitfulness but this applies to every area of life he said the sluggard will refuse to plow the land what is his excuse help me please there is cold there are so many people who have given useless excuses why they are the way they are and in nigeria we have so many of these people a lot of youths are angry with the government and say in america once you are 18 they give you money and now they are saying if they were helping me my life would have changed and because of that you move on being a failure in life and when they ask you why this is your excuse are you listening to me there are many people that have given all kinds of excuses my father is an irresponsible man if my father was as responsible as other people do you think i'll be where i am now that you know what are you doing about it hallelujah i used to live a bad life sleeping around now that you know what are you doing about it are you following me now there are so many people it's easy to pass the blame of your life to other people there are many of us still holding our parents fathers mothers and different people my father cursed me that's why i'm not moving oh you are aware have you taken any step what are you doing about it are you listening to me please i came from a polygamous family they didn't treat me well it's not a lie but what are you doing about it are you going to allow your destiny to be at the mercy of all kinds of excuses jesus came from nazareth hallelujah an innocent child 
suddenly Herod finds him to kill him. He would have gotten angry and said, Father, please take me back. Look at this nonsense. I'm coming to help people who are sinners. And you are not even encouraging my journey. You want to kill me. It's amazing. Ask many people why they are not advancing in life. They will start crying. And they will start telling you stories of yesteryears. There was a guy when I was four years old. The guy abused me. And that's the reason why every time I see men or women, I, I have an, an uncontrolled desire. My brother and my sister, how many years or decades has that been? What are you doing about it? Are you listening to me? someone insulted me and told me i'll never be anything so every time people talk to me and now we have all kinds of psychological teachings that encourage us to live in that realm they say you see mankind is a, our complexity as men there are certain subconscious things that remain and when it comes you are hurt you are emotionally hurt your heart is down look get up and move on with your destiny you know some of us get into situations and we give excuses wait until you hear the story of someone and the things they survive to come out you will see that you have no excuse for solomon told us that there is nothing that has happened in the earth that is happening for the first time are you listening to me say i refuse to give excuses oh I, my father took me to a school where we sat down on stones that's why my jam resort i've been suffering now you can imagine this wicked man you drink this thing we sat on stones they use chalk my brother and my sister now that you are responsible for your destiny what have you done by yourself hallelujah when kofi annan was the secretary general of the united nations he made a statement on children's day he said let the children not suffer the consequences of the carelessness of their parents hallelujah when i heard that statement i appreciated it on one side but on another side it didn't make sense to me because it is true that you cannot change other people so the only way to move forward is to change yourself are you listening to me excuses several people give excuses oh my father was this see let me tell you something i'm not saying your excuses are not legitimate they are but for as long as you allow satan to keep bringing that as a reason you will remain there forever there are people in this place who lost their loved ones lost their fathers their mothers when they were growing up there are several people who were under some hostile environments there are several of you who were involved in witchcraft and divination it's not your fault you grew up into it hallelujah my father's mother was a traditional worshiper am i if if i add what i'm doing now with small tradition the day they catch me i say hey, why wouldn't i do it you know you watch people and see the excuses they give on tv they catch a senator looting money and then he brings a flimsy and stupid excuse he says am i the only one they should go and ask what happened to our foreign reserve what has that got to do with what you did now every time every time you are convicted the the thing for people is to look for excuse you pour water here and ask people who did this what will people say it's not me but what is he not affecting all of us say it's not me that mindset is what i want to remove this night hallelujah for let me tell you something brothers and sisters the great in life are men who have come out of unbelievable excuses are you listening to me all kinds of excuses they have the have, i i read a lot about successful people because the bible says that he who dwells among the wise will be wise ministers people in government politics the corporate world i study about their lives and i'm telling you you cannot imagine what some of them had to endure a man called william seymour the pioneer of the azusa street revival hallelujah the bible tells sorry not the bible history tells us that the founder the one who brought in the azusa street he had one eye one eye hallelujah 
there are many of us who right now you are you are there is annoyance and grief in your spirit with the government of nigeria with your families say my brother is because they were sponsoring him to school that's why i didn't go to school okay now you didn't go to school and then your brother maybe ended up becoming an abrob and forever every time you see him say this is the demon that swallowed up my destiny people give all kinds of excuses the bible says go to the ants you sluggard and learn a very powerful lesson they take about 50 times their weight they have never given excuse and say god why didn't you increase our size seeing that we are this hard working they are able to coordinate themselves listen brothers and sisters if you do not stop giving excuses in your life i promise you you will live a life of bitterness and regret you will initiate your children you watch some people in the television and see how your parents frown at them say ah mr h then the job he said ah, daddy what happened say this guy i remember how many years the guy has gone for they are interviewing him in, on tv the guy is happy your father is here you are saying okay so how about our own life say, are you not hearing what i'm saying no you just add you just pass the anger to people there are people who are perpetually angry you ask them why why should i be happy are you not seeing what is going on in the world can you imagine obama he doesn't know you you are dying there Good luck, Jonathan. God punish him. He didn't hear it. Listen, I'm telling you something. Get out of this thing. The VC of Abu, stupid man. He doesn't know you. You are not living in his house. You see the house he's living in. You are there angry. Oh, this is my stupid lecturer. God will punish him. Yet the semester just started. You are going to see him as many times, and you can't drive him away. Listen, let me tell you something if you don't stop give, while you are laughing i hope you are getting this this is a very serious issue hallelujah excuses the bible do you know the bible says he gave unto men matthew 25 five talent two talent and what one what was the excuse of the last one he said i know you are a hard man so that was his observation all through that period while his other colleagues were making use of destiny he was there saying i know you are a hard man you like reaping where you did so There are many of us who are here with our destiny. See, I cannot speak English. If God only made me finer than I am now, God, you said you didn't try. Eh? What is the meaning of all this nonsense? Oh God, if I had done this, if only I could speak like that guy. If only I could write. God, if you just give you are giving me this guy's charisma, what the books I would have written by now. You think the people were born like that? see what you do not know is that every successful man started somewhere we are used to studying people's results not their history hallelujah so you see a man drops outside with a jeep lincoln and say hey, sand youths moving for the advocacy of employment you know, what is that and they gather themselves they fight over secretary they fight over something and they write a petition they say we want to see the presidency and you can do they get there and say, sir, on behalf of the youth in Nigeria, we are speaking. Why are there no jobs? Think our ways of living. You are just hoping that one day, your father will just call you and say, now son, I've waited all these years to tell you that there's one secret inheritance that I've kept because you watched it in the Nigerian film. Now your father is getting older. You didn't hear anything. You didn't hear anything. Later, your father will call you and say, oh boy, do and get out of my household. Then it dawns on you that there's really nothing for you. Then you start getting bitter. The Bible says children are, are supposed to enjoy inheritance from the parents. Now that it didn't happen, what are you doing about it? You are there grumbling, writing books and articles, petitioning your parents. See, let me tell you something. I want you to make a determination tonight that you're going to take hold of your destiny. Are you listening to me? You can't cry forever. 
you've got to brace up wipe your tears and move yes the man slept with you when you were growing up yes all kinds of things happened your uncle abused you yes this and that happened yes somebody broke your heart yes somebody did this yes the brother came into your life and swore heaven and hell and told you greek and hebrew and aramaic and left you yes this and that happened but what are you going to do today are you listening to me many people give excuses oh it's cold so you won't plow the land you just ask people why they are. i have not sample 12 people ask them why they are in this level of life only about one in those 12 will take responsibility and, to take any. and most of the people who will make that decision are usually bad but drunkards and the rest you go and ask drunkards and smokers they'll open up they'll tell you truly i'm responsible for where i am now but go and ask christians didn't i pray that day even my seed i gave now i'm, I'm watching god the day will come when i would you can imagine I brought someone to koinonia now see the person growing doors are opening god let me tell you if you are not going to do this i will backslide i will do this and that and they ask you they say okay why are you not consistent with god now you say when when he doesn't solve my problem won't i go who is suffering tonight is the night when you open up yourself and say listen i don't care from where i'm starting but I will not end there. Are you listening to me? Say in the name of Jesus. I will not end where I am. Say it like you believe it. Inside and outside. In the name of Jesus. I will not end where I am. There's more about my life. I'm telling you. Believe it. You wait and hear the stories of all kinds of people. And the things that they went through people who trusted God are dead beds others even died and came back to life and made up their minds hallelujah there are people today look at the man Job if there's anybody who should be discouraged about destiny it should be a man Job he got to a point in one day your children dead cattle dead everything dead and then boils grow on your body again to the point that dogs come and they are licking it imagine your father sitting naked using ashes the bible said he sat upon ashes this was somebody who was talked about yet job said though he slay me yet will i praise him the wife said job i love you we had all these children with you and right now i must tell you that i'm tired job said why are you speaking like one of these foolish women the bible says at the end of his life he refused excuses can i tell you something great people are those who do what weak people refuse to do they they break through all kinds of things excuses oh we come from this tribe our tribe yeah, we are always known for this there are all kinds of people giving useless excuses the people from our tribe they, they know us in our tribe as dollars jale Lord, do everyone if they you just call our tribe what are you going to do about it with all the word you are hearing we like women in our village it's a cause oh, everybody has it who doesn't have it please now that the word is entering your spirit is it doing anything us in our place so it's women that work the job of the man is to go and get children and allow everyone what are you doing about it When they went with the prophet the bible says the axe head fell inside the ground they would have said to prophet at least you saw what we were doing before the axe head." they said no prophet come many of you i'm telling you this god asked me to preach this message there are many of you that need to release your parents especially your father left you to your mother alone yes you struggled your father is enjoying in maybe UK or abroad or anywhere and you are here suffering what are you going to do about it do you know you sit down there before you know it you will look around and see four children and you are sitting in the parlor with them narrating the same story that you didn't do anything about 
the children say daddy what what really why are we like this and you say sit down since you have asked i will tell you what what kind of life is that some of you may be laughing now you see some of you may be laughing now but you don't do anything about it and you see you'll be shocked in your life because it won't change automatically i made up my mind years ago that i was going to take responsibility for my life hallelujah many of you have had to miss semesters for students sessions maybe because one uncle who was supposed to be responsible said he will sleep with you he no sleeping with you no school fees and forever you sit down and say this uncle oh god miracle service you write his his name say god punish this man for me let his children know now we have all kinds of ridiculous woes is it do you realize that one man's failure or success does not affect your own praise the lord there are all kinds of people angry in society giving excuses go and meet our parents and they give all kinds of excuses it's true there's corruption say forget jerry if i were yoruba they would have promoted me now or if i were Igbo, they would have all this Igbo thing or all this northern thing but have you made efforts you call the person who is making noise and try to interview him and see that this guy cannot even do anything instead of him to people are building he's not doing anything saying this contract yeah you know about people that's how they do or outside people not done as with their stupidity he's always like that and the person who is shot the day they give him that contract you wait and see how he will change he won't do it he will cause trouble are you ready for it no say i refuse excuses number two in fact say after me my success depends on me i take my destiny and i pay the price i pay the price i release everyone say it i release everyone and i take responsibility hallelujah number two one of the reasons why people end up becoming failures in life please never forget this for as long as you live number two violating the law of process violating the law of process you just write it i'll explain it look at one scripture quickly mark 4 28 someone help us read we have to hurry up mark 4 28 are you receiving something tonight is god speaking to someone there are some of you your brothers are 35 years 40 years they are still at home true or false you ask them why they'll see your father they'll hit themselves the day your father talked they'll say see let me tell you something when i was 26 years remember this now you are 40. you marry and still carry the wife to your father's house and say is this house will stay the day you give me land i'll pack out can you imagine The, you wait and see how do you know most of family fighting is on inheritance is that true the father left land and they said this land Abba, will kill ourselves on this land you will see three generations fighting over the land that their great grandfather who was a king gave them they don't do anything mark 4 28 please read sir shall i come for the earth it? bring it forth fruit of it of herself for the earth bring it forth fruit of herself listen first the blade first what happens the blade all right then the ear then the ear after that the, the full corn after that the full corn stop god bless you it says the earth brings but it tells you how we bring it says first what the blade followed by the ear and then a lot of people have become failures please listen give me your ears your heart your eyes everything a lot of people have become failures in life because they do not know the law of process this is a message that is not taught again because we're in a jet age a generation where anything is possible hallelujah 
the bible says in luke 2 verse 52 it says and jesus grew say after me and jesus grew the bible didn't say jesus became and jesus grew in wisdom in stature and in favor with god jesus grew the lord grew the bible says as far as the earth remains seed hold on time and harvest many of us read it in a rush there are three words there one is seed second is time third harvest it didn't just say seed harvest seed time harvest the law of a process many people let me tell you something this is what separates the great ones from those who are not great if i say now god will make you a great leader everybody will lift hands amen hallelujah i prophesy to you or Janfa gets up here and says the lord is showing me my brother that in five years you are going to become a world changer guys start smiling i say i like koinonia i like this kind of thing these are the kind of things i would like to hear but now when god says let me tell you you know the thing about god he doesn't tell you how you will get there he will first show you a picture of the promised land and say let's go later you will stop and say oh god god said didn't i show you let's go hallelujah i don't watch films most of the time but the lord made me to watch one film called lord of the rings many of you watch film for entertainment i got some powerful spiritual lessons about that film hallelujah i learned a lot of things another film i watched called akila and the bee did you learn anything you are saying yes you just keep quiet and let me preach to you because many of you have watched it more than 10 times you can say everything but you can't bring the moral lesson hallelujah someone who grew with no advantage whatsoever and became a world changer what is your excuse listen let me tell you everyone i know whether in the ministry in business in politics in government in the arts media whatever it is whatever area anyone who truly stepped into sustainable greatness went through a process are you listening to me anyone that preaches to you now we have all kinds of messages spiritual shortcut there's a pathway you can navigate in a hurry let me tell you that pathway is witchcraft yes it's witchcraft i will say it because if you follow that path let me tell you something with satan he will give you the products now and come for his money later on oh he's a good businessman he will tell you you have it and then you join the americans what america is doing is is a, a physical manifestation of what satan does to people in the spirit you buy your destiny on credit and leave everything so if you were in america now many of you would have come for koinonia with jeeps once you are 18 years they give you money you build house on credit marry a wife on credit divorce her on credit build a business on credit and you hold on and begin to see the kind of thing you are living for your children i like nigeria thank god there's nothing like credit system in nigeria if you don't have it just go back home it's a very good system are you listening to me are you getting blessed tonight say i receive gifts to go through the process many young people don't like this statement process once you mention process ah people don't like it hallelujah every time you watch jollof rice when they finish it and package it and bring it you start smiling every time we're about to eat the food that our welfare people prepared for us sometimes i look and i just imagine how did they do this how did they do all of that how the processes you can't just lay hands on the rice and say i invoke <laughs> by an ability of the spirit hey, let this thing become rice it doesn't work that way
Hallelujah. Because that's what many people are doing. Some of you are doing it as you are laughing. It may not be for rice, but you are doing it for your destiny. You are sitting down and hoping. That's why many of you like teachings on favor. You are hoping. Aya, I will enter houses I didn't build. I will marry wife I didn't ask out. I will have children I didn't. Get out of that illusion this night in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. There are brothers waiting for the sister to just manifest and see them. There are sisters hoping that one day they'll wake up and say, Ah, you are the one. You hold on and watch the shocker that life brings. We like it when a generation of employment without submitting CV, everything. So we like it. The jet age that leads people into stupidity. There is something called the law of process. Let me tell you two things you need to know about the law of process. Number one, in the school of greatness you must be tested and proven to be honored by god if it is god if it's your shrine or another um, demonic entity is okay but if it is god let me tell you something you must be tried and tested psalm 66 verse 12 he said thou hast caused men to ride upon our heads we walk through fire and through water but thou broughtest us into a wealthy place men rode through our heads we went through fire through water are you listening to me behind every glory there is a story many of you are not interested in the story you just keep admiring things that will never come into your life and many of us have gone to churches where you claim you come and drop your seed and don't do anything and watch how your life will surprise you hallelujah the favor of god will never replace the law of process are you listening to me so don't you think that if you can get the favor anointing everything in your life will just happen like that I hope you know Jesus Christ had the power to save mankind without dying. You know that in the infinite wisdom of God there would have been a way. Why did Mary just give birth to Jesus? You just hear a child just cry, ah! Then you see a great man say, I'm in a hurry. I need to save mankind. <laughs> you give birth to a child like that and see how you will run. You just give birth to him, he landed and just got up. Say, what's going on here? What's my destiny? What's my assignment? It doesn't happen that way. It can't happen that way. If a baby drinks one drum of breast milk, does he become a man? Answer me. You call him a healthy baby. That's what happens. If an old man fasts for 100 years and dies, did you say a baby died? Who died? An old man. The law of process has cheated many people violating this law running into realms that you have not gotten into it takes time for true success to manifest write it it takes time so you don't let anybody deceive you someone just gets his small 500 or six or seven hundred thousand just buys his golf wagon and won't let you rest come to see the world is working in my life and you are taking things gradually but you are beginning to faint and say kai pressure is even coming from home and people are saying see now my brother just said he's a vet doctor and you know we live in a society that puts pressure on us you hold on and start hearing the calls that come from everywhere say we're waiting on start sending the money and now you are under all kinds of pressure left right and center it takes time for true success to manifest let me tell you what a process teaches you a process simply means the pathway to your destination or whatever you want to achieve number one a process tests your loyalty and commitment to fulfilling your destiny listen listen look at me a process will test whether you are really interested in fulfilling destiny or not oh god use me hallelujah and somebody just somebody just said uh, sorry i'm hungry 
and God tells you the 500 naira in your pocket, that's all you have home and abroad. God will say, Give the person, say, God, the Bible says, You are telling God, oh, the Bible says, Love your neighbor as yourself, not better than yourself. And you are looking at God, and then you say, You want to be a minister. Oh, God, give me crowd like Koinonia. You hold on. When you go through the process, at the end of it, you know whether you want it or not. Process tests your loyalty. Let me tell you something. <clears throat> If you survive a process you deserve the result are you listening to me many people don't survive it I was listening to an interview by you but angel many people say you are an exceptional prophet you are a celebrity he said I'm said I'm persecuted how can I be the celebrated you go online and see all kinds of things about him but many people will see and say I want that level of grace see on easy lies the head that wears the crown don't don't allow success bait you too quick let the process of god screen your true desire success tests loyalty hallelujah how many of you want to be evangelists everybody get up when jakes comes because many of you think it's just anointing and you fall down jake says all right um Every week we are going to be going on evangelism. They will start with 100 people who came out emotional, even crying, cleaning their tears. After two weeks, you may find only 10 people. Why? Because you have initiated the principle of a process. A process is what separates great people from those. It's easy to talk, but it's a process that separates people. I want to be a champion. I am somebody. And you just dance. I am somebody if it were just to be like that there are people who varieties of oil has come upon their head it would have changed their life by now process process so process helps you it tests your loyalty anything you are not loyal and committed to you will never get it at the end number two process builds patience impatience has cheated many people in life listen to me there's no anointing impartation hand laying for patience you are taught patience experientially the bible says in james 1 verse 3 it says count it all joy my brethren when you go through several diverse um, temptations he said knowing this that the trying of your faith will produce patience he said and let patience have her full course that it will make you mature not lacking in anything patience how many of you have come to meet your father or some of your parents and while you are jumping and excited about some things they promised me visa to uk you just see your father not interested he said why uncle promise and your father is just looking as if he didn't hear you you have never gone through disappointment in your young and youthful life he received disappointment in 1971 somebody promised him he was going to scotland he didn't go it happened again in 1970 he has gone through too much things it has helped him to be patient you are coming happy yo and they prophesied this you know he's just looking at you two weeks later you come back and say god this is my uncle you have told your friends he told you just keep quiet first you you are too grateful to keep quiet you ran around town ran your mouth around there are some things only age can teach when you see your father keep quiet he said they promoted me but you just wait let it manifest say, what is that don't hide good things after you receive disappointments for a number of times you become grounded initiated into patience experientially hallelujah your car was not good they say let's fix it say no let's go are you joking the world is working they say let's fix this thing it can cause trouble on the road you say ah. daniel said this this in the bible this this said this then you are going you stop and sleep on the road that night you call on to the god of israel you pray and sing listen to koinonia tapes nothing happens the next day when you see a zealous apostle say let's go you see is the car working if it's not working say hold on it's not lack of faith you are you say i can wait i'm not in a hurry I, if i cannot make the first two days of the program i can make the third day i'm not in a hurry 
that spirit of i believe in speed we prophesy it every miracle service but there is a hurry hurry that leads you to death are you listening to me run away from it you sit down you know the background you are coming from you look at your friend and say hey this girl is wearing brazilian weevil me i'm here soaking my own and washing and rinsing it every time who said you will remain like that who said you remain like that and you are under all kinds of pressure impatience has produced arm robbers impatience has produced let me tell you most people that violate the laws of life are people who could not be patient men i, I shared it here men of god who have touched a lot of things adding to the anointing they have mixed the anointing with wine it's not that god didn't call them they said kai to wait five years we were on campus for four years meeting at the back of sunday school building every night we were being proven by god i cannot tell you the suggestions that came from different people do this do that god showed me this some even drew the diagram of what they saw and brought it i said thank god but when it was god's grace what happened he brought us to this level and we will stay on course until it pleases his majesty to open greater doors if you learn to be patient in life you will find out that your patience will make you faster than those who are running watch a driver who is running and saying driver we are young people in this car let's go 180 the driver said i've been driving for the past 10 years i've had accident 10 times i'm not in a hurry we'll get to zaria you are just running one car just passes you later on you see people picking out the legs here the head of the person here and you will now say oh dear god this would have been us patience god can wait god can wait god is not in a hurry the way many people teach god can wait let's hurry up number three a process helps you to appreciate success and to honor successful people if you have not gone through a process you will never know how to appreciate success many of you take certain things that god bring to your life for granted until you go through certain processes when you come out can i tell you something as i grow in ministry every day i cultivate a deep respect for the fathers of faith who have gone ahead seeing some of the challenges that come before us in ministry and other things when you see certain fathers you just wonder what did these people endure you hear about some of them who had churches and god asked them to leave and go to lagos and they slept on that bridge for months before they got their parishes and so you just think see i learned this from dr mike modok celebrate greatness when you enter his presence don't pretend there is no greatness there are you listening to me when you enter it i shared it in in when we're doing the teaching on the law of honor whenever you see greatness don't pretend this is not greatness celebrate greatness when you enter its presence because the great are those who have endured what you could not endure they went through things where you gave up they continued the film lord of the rings again among the many scenes in that film there was one scene that i will never forget remember when a gentleman called sam he wasn't the one holding the ring are you listening to me but frodo the ring bearer got tired and he said something he said i may not be able to carry the ring but i can carry you and he carried that gentleman and started moving him and together they accomplished destiny listen to me let me tell you something successful people are those who did not give up where you gave up so celebrate greatness when you enter its presence it may be your brother it may be your sister success helps you sometimes you see people standing in anointing because you got born again and every prayer you prayed was answered you now say those who are fasting i beg jerry then you go through some process there are some people that if i see them doing some things i just keep quiet because we saw it happen on campus there are people who were very stubborn and they were not well behaved before but now when they see you they greet you ah every time i look at them i say you have come you have crossed that door you just see them they see you and they greet you they say sorry is there anything you think god is saying about my life they won't say that before when they see you before they'll come and push how are we colleagues in ministry when certain things went through and whipped them back to order 
when they see you now they greet how many of you have seen people like that they used to be so rude and hostile to you we are roommates so we are this you forget you may be my senior in secondary school but we are roommates now don't play with me then the day they need your help the day they make a stupid decision they will now know they are childish and they will come and you bring forth wisdom a process helps you to appreciate success some of you inherited the success you have now so you are taking it for granted you grew up with a plasma screen in your house so when somebody is giving testimony and saying we use how many of you know this kind of cd plates that are round you just hold it and touch it lightly then it starts going around that's how some people grew up but you grew up with everything some you even have gadgets that you just speak to it from your room we grew up and my parents my younger sister is here we had one beetle green beetle i learned how to drive with that beetle no alignment no nothing you are driving is going you have to bring it back but many of you grew up it was a jeep that carried you from the hospital and brought you you just grew up one day you saw yourself you saw people snapping and say daddy who is our father they say he's a commissioner or is this so you don't know how to appreciate success you trivialize a lot of things you insult your cook and say you mean this is the food you cooked and then sometimes after you go through certain processes you come back with a depth of wisdom every time you see success you appreciate it hallelujah number four process creates a memory that helps you sustain success when it comes listen this is very important the bible says the prosperity of fools will destroy them can i tell you why god no matter how you pray and fast there are some realms you must grow into you will never jump into them you know why because there are certain memories you need to sustain success are you listening to me look up please there are many of you here you don't know what it means to be charismatic and to be a celebrity it can be demonic are you listening to me you get to a point where men can almost worship you at that point you need the memory of the wilderness to sustain you because you can get to a point in your life people cannot even talk to you they can't access your office they can't do everything that's why today every time i stand you see when i sit down here you put see me close my eyes sometimes i just remember i say god god of israel to see where god took us and brought us by grace a process creates memory are you listening to me when you were taking pap and cocoa you will buy cocoa 20 naira, yam 10 naira. the remaining 10 naira they should put pap half cup when you are taking and now the moment you see delicacies you will remember the bible says thou shall remember so while you are enjoying in the palace that's why david danced he danced before god and Saul's daughter was saying, don't embarrass us. He said, I'm dancing before God who collected the kingdom from your father and gave to me. People who do not, you see why many politicians are reckless over spending because they did not go through a process. Hallelujah. Somebody had 50,000 home and abroad in his account. You jumped into an office and you saw accounts linked to your office with no name. They were not tied to your name. They were tied to the office. You awarded a contract of 10 million. And somebody just brings a, a car of, of 2 million naira. Say, I just said you should use it as throw. When you want to buy a recharge car, just throw it. You say, what for? Many people jump into success and destiny. That's why they are short-lived. No matter what kind of prayer you pray, if it is success that comes from God, I assure you, that door of process, you must pass through it. Fast, pray, cry you must pass through it there are some cups in life that are not meant to pass you must drink it peter said i will drink the cup he didn't even wait to hear what jesus was saying and he truly drank it and some cups are big so i must drink everything inside i was told of a man just a story a fictional story i believe that he went to heaven was come complaining and say god which kind of useless cross are you giving me to carry like this i'm seeing people laughing i'm the only ones frowning in the world 
then that he went to heaven and they led him into a room there were all kinds of crosses different weights and sizes and the lord said oh yeah go and pick one by yourself so that it won't be me he saw one small one very small he just went and carried and the lord said but that's the same thing you just you just carried what you are complaining that's the one you were carrying on earth the guy said you mean there are some people carrying this one he said and they are happy on earth from that day he came back with a mindset process we have taught people in church that process is as a result of lack of faith or demonism or all, 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 all kinds of things it's not true do you know David was anointed king sir but when he was anointed king where did he run to back to the wilderness he was anointed king he was not anointed shepherd but he went back to the wilderness and what happened he grew into the throne hallelujah he was he played strings for the king he became his armor bearer then he became king i won't deceive you brothers and sisters there are many of you that are running too fast in life and you are you are soon going to have a head-on collision with disappointment you need to pipe down come to yourself and take life gradually I asked some people, I said, what's your financial budget? What do you want to make per year? And they mentioned one stupid and ridiculous and childish figure. Whether it's, it's 10 billion or something, they said they want to be getting per month. I said, starting from now, I said, yes. <laughs> your brother is collecting 30,000. I said, me God forbid. If it's not 250, I won't start. You hold on. Life has a beautiful way of teaching people lessons. You see someone collected that is i say me with these faith that i have now you just wait and see or someone finished school and is going to teach i say what kind of nonsense is this ah you have fallen our hands hold on you are going to finish contagora your convocation come down is waiting for you at contagora square you will finish and then suddenly you find out that life is not fair as you are graduating your uncle that says you should bring cv just says i'm relocating to holland number one welcome to the real world then your father says now i've been waiting to tell you this you're of age please go and find a bus quarters or whatever just get out of my presence a process helps you it sustains an experience how many of you have seen very wealthy people live simple lives and you are surprised you say if it's me that had this money because you don't never covet a man's result if you don't want his history never never covet a man's result that's why reading books i like reading books about people's history not just their results hallelujah they talk about johnson suleiman apostle johnson suleiman a great man many people see him today do you know that this guy i hear was one who was cleaning the shoes of idahosa and doing a lot of things Janfa was telling me how that there was a time someone fell down when Idahosa was around. Fell down in the presence of Johnson Suleiman and broke his head into two. Idahosa held the two heads and joined it back. He was watching process. Today you see him shouting and speaking and you just say, Lord, that dimension, I give myself a span of three months. Wait and see the demons that will lead you there. I'm out of time. I'll round up finally by sharing keys to a successful destiny. I'll give us six keys. Tonight's teaching is very simple and we'll pray. Six keys to a successful destiny. Look at me. Lift your right hand, everybody. Say in the name of Jesus. Say, Lord, I receive grace to go through the process of greatness. Say, Lord, I receive grace. I'm not in a hurry. I will wait i will move at your timing and enter my destiny in the name of jesus don't let anybody put pressure on you they say at your age you are not married they don't have the same destiny if the person is not married tell him go and marry in the in, in, the overtaking is allowed go don't don't put pressure on me or they look at you now and say see at age 26 i was a millionaire look at you 33 33 you are looking at me take it easy you have a ministry there are only five people you come and sit down in koinonia and say hey you find out how our first crusades were first crusade the first day of our first crusades those of us who went i think we were we were 
it was us and then some other few people one day i told god i said see crowd or no crowd crowd started coming in our ministry when we gave up on the issue of crowd and just focused on god i see a lot of people especially young pastors around the, that that the people come carry all kinds of offering and write all kinds of useless titles on it and come and meet me and see one to tap it calm down don't you know that at every level there is a level of responsibility that comes with success keys to a successful destiny number one determination you must be determined to succeed do you know what determination is is a resolve is a resolve burn the bridge behind you and say no matter how long it will take i will get to destiny some of you here god is calling you into different areas fashion media you know that god has told you that the world will hear your voice but are you willing to pay the price let me tell you the truth if you know what the price is and you pay the price nobody will stop you if if a little girl madame's daughter madam if your daughter holds assuming a mercedes benz is seven million if your daughter holds a check of seven million and goes to a car factory and gives them will they say your daughter is too small she brought the price let me tell you something every enviable destiny you see including your own has a price tag stop deceiving yourself look very well you will see the price tag be determined to succeed be determined you must lose something to get to your destiny i won't deceive you you will lose your reputation you will lose some sacrifices you may lose your weight you may lose a lot of things because you will have to fast and pray you will lose a lot of things you'll be wearing two shirts and one trouser you wash it in the night and wear it in the morning but you are buying books no problem a day will come you will not need to buy things again for the rest of your life because you have created an impact a time will come in my life i am convinced if i buy clothes is my choice a time will come in my life if i buy cars oyedeko said they give him cars every day where were the people when he was driving his beetle to go and hear what god was asking they will come eventually be determined say in the name of jesus i'm determined to succeed say it in the name of jesus no matter what i will go through i make up my mind no matter what i have to endure i will fulfill destiny look beyond limitations look beyond barriers number two number two go for information i beg you brothers and sisters go for information your destiny will not open up automatically it's good to pray it's good to fast go for knowledge get information hallelujah the bible says study to show yourself approved a workman second timothy 2 verse 15 study study he said and i daniel understood by books great men in life are those who read study study the life of great people who are in the area that god is calling you there are two ways to learn in life mentors and mistakes mistakes are the ways that foolish people learn hallelujah mentors open up their wounds for you to see are you listening to me so that you may not have to make that same mistake again let people help your life get their books get tapes the bible says follow them who through faith and patience study their stories pray don't just run after power what do they do that brings the presence of god what do they do that brings the favor of god what opened the heavens for them hallelujah say i go for knowledge the bible says proverbs 4 verse 7 he said get wisdom get understanding go for wisdom go for understanding many of us don't buy books we don't invest many of us don't go online years ago 
before they even started internet mobile communication we used to go for vigil in um, evolution cafe we we'll go and sit down there and we'll just be night vigil because we could not afford browsing anytime we wanted so we'll go in the night you pay 150 or is it 200 then and then you browse all through the night we are browsing peter tan we are searching what is the holy ghost doing around the earth why are some people poor google search you keep your eyes there you are wrestling with sleep you say sleep i have a journey i'm going you won't stop me when you are feeling sleepy you get up and stroll outside with your shoe and sandals scattered your shirts oversized everything but you say i'm going somewhere many of you don't be ashamed of the process because it will be a while and you will live it forever hallelujah we're praying any of you sleep and snore and wake up and get angry you think your destiny will open like that no sir get wisdom get information we invested heavily in books i still read books till today i read books on leadership i read books that help me it's not everything you see done that is just the anointing in that sense we're rounding up number three spend time spend time praying for your life and destiny write it if you don't pray for your destiny and you find out that you get there you got there you were dreaming i assure you you were dreaming just wake up wipe your tears and see what you are in now if you wake up just find out that you are because you have a devil who will not let you enter your destiny but it is through the greatness of thy power that the enemies will submit themselves and he spake a parable to the end that men would ought always to pray and not to faint don't you think the devil will sit down and just watch your destiny unfold from the day jesus was announced satan started following him when jesus was fasting satan was patient waited for 40 solid days until jesus finished he said oh thank you and he came he said now that uh, this has happened he began to negotiate your destiny will not change overnight spend time praying lock yourself pray carry the notebook if you don't have a notebook that you are recording things for destiny i know you are lazy and you are not serious about your destiny you must have a notebook how many of you have notebooks don't lift your hands because some of you will be lying don't lift your hands how many of you have notebooks that you write that god showed me i saw it in a vision that one day i'm going to be helping the less privileged i saw myself on tv i saw myself i saw myself beyond my geographical location i saw myself Yes, I can't speak English well, but the me I saw in the speak in the future was speaking polished English. So you don't rejoice over me now. I know I'm making grammatical structure and, and nonsense, but I'm praying. Thank God you don't need to learn tongues. I'm praying it, and I'm rising. Get Tessaros, get a good dictionary, and sit down. God told you you will be a public speaker. You think the way you are talking like this will invite you? Change your mind and read very well. Get a book on public speaking and read. You want to be a man of God and you are ashamed of people and God has said you stand before crowds. The remedy, pray in tongues. Boldness. Boldness will come upon you. Hallelujah. So get a notebook, everyone. A notebook, write destiny or purpose or whatever. I have notebooks for my finances, for the things that God tells me, for the visions that he has shown me some of the books are torn I've, I've been transferring them through the years some of the sermons that we preach here are, are things that the lord taught me sometimes i would dust it and read it and cry and say your majesty you taught me these things i did not understand but now i understand if you don't have any book who how will you teach people in the future because many of you are only thinking about yourself and your wife and your children think posterity hallelujah spend time praying say i receive grace to pray for my destiny be disciplined be disciplined and focused 
Isaiah 50 verse 7 he said I have set my eyes like a flint you must be focused in life many of you are too distracted you are doing everything you are in every group you are in every association you are in everything where are you going I'm going where small time now you carry one girl or one guy add to the, the trouble you are creating you are going where are we going how many of you have climbed bike and you told the bike he called the name of the place he didn't even hear he said yes i know and now you are going later you tell him ah do you know the place he said kai i the last time i came here he doesn't know where he's going when you don't know where you are going and you carry other people there's an accident that is going to happen for sure be disciplined if god has called you to ministry for instance you've got to be disciplined you are like a military man you cannot entangle yourself with civilian affairs it's a sacrifice you can't live an ordinary life no you can't accept the call see when you accept the call of god upon your life that's your end to an ordinary life sisters if god has told you you will marry a man of god just know that you are going to live a life of sacrifice forever just forget about trying to have it my way that one is gone go and look for a pilot or or, or someone a businessman God has called you. What's your name, sir? Eh? Philip, please stand up, sir. God has called you, for instance. All right? And those keep standing. And said, Philip, tomorrow you are going to own banks. For instance. And now God has spoken to you. And now Philip is not doing anything. He just says, Prophet, so, so, so. so every time he sees him on TV, he said, That's the guy. He spoke about my destiny. He said it 10 years ago. Ten years later nothing no movement in the realm of the spirit because it will not happen automatically please sit down what has god told you what are you doing about it when i knew the call of god was upon my life i started reading books i have books about ethics of ministry i have books about church planting discipline focus now is not the time for visiting everybody that day will come but now is not the time some of you are always visiting and running around. You go and meet your friends. Tell lies. Tell lies. Tell lies. You are lying and they are listening to you. You are just telling lies. You don't even know when you have tied yourself in. They are just looking at you. You are lying. What you say you didn't do. In the gist later you said you did it. And then they remind you. and say, Oh sorry. I didn't do this. Those things are unnecessary. Settle down with your destiny. The Bible says in the multitude of many words, many useless words, sin. What is the sin for words? Lying. You say things that didn't happen, create your film there, act it, the people are watching you. Be composed. Listen, I'm telling you, package yourself like a leader. You can't just do everything. Hallelujah. Be disciplined. You are saying God is going to bless you and you stand before nations. You are just moving outside. You just buy popcorn. You just carry oh, you have it. some even small. You pick it and drop. You won't go far that way. I assure you, you won't go pray in tongues. You won't go far that way. You must be disciplined. You go somewhere. You have not even prayed for the people. They said there's food. You say, hey, thank you. Why can't you hold yourself? The Bible says a man who does not have control over his spirit is like a city without walls. There is a time to eat. There is a time to live. There is a time to collect money for many gullible people. There is a time to live and say, God bless you. Hallelujah. There are ethics. Many of us need to learn it. You have not done anything you want to sit in front. The Bible says when you come into a place, go and sit at the back. Hallelujah. It's God that will bring you to the front. Many of you will come. I'm not saying front, literally. You get what I'm saying? You just come and sit. Then later they say the, the people who they kept the seat for coming, they lead you in front of everybody. You must go and sit at that back and start gradually till you come. If you ever came to the front because someone brought you, that's not your position. It's just favor. You will still go back. Many people have lived around successful people and they think they are successful. If I have a friend, come sir, my brother. If I have a friend, assuming this guy is my PA, every time I go for administration, you will sit in front of me. He can be deceitful. Because the day I'm not around, you will bounce in front. And they'll say, go back, Charlie. You really believe you deserve the front seat? 
many of you are leveraging on the success of others and god is telling you you need to create a track record for yourself you don't pray but their prayer covers for you you don't fast their fasting covers you say i like this kind of friendship a day will come you will stand on your own that's the day the robber will hit the road god bless you sir the time i was trying to save has gone praise god finally embrace a life of competence and excellence proverbs 22 verse 29 see thou a man diligent in his business mediocrity will only end you average in life whether in ministry whether in business whether in politics whether in education on your job be excellent be competent genesis 41 verse 14 powerful scripture it says and pharaoh sent for joseph and pharaoh sent for joseph why because he interpreted the dreams do you know what he said he said and pharaoh sent for joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon pharaoh sent for joseph joseph had prepared himself i've said it favor is when preparation meets opportunity and the king pharaoh sent for joseph and what happened they brought joseph out of his competence that will bring you out of your dungeon many of you are in some dungeons you inherited if you remain there you will remain there you will give birth there hallelujah i have a destiny in christ and i vowed to my generation that i will pay the debts that i owe this generation i'm speaking to champions right now look at me we're going to pray many of you are sitting you are hearing the voice of god through what i'm saying you need to rise up tonight don't just feel emotional about it and tell yourself i've had this word and i'm going to run with it outside some of you may be outside nobody is seeing you you are just there i want you to know that destiny is calling vow to yourself that i won't fail that you won't allow anybody go back and find out what am i on earth here for cry unto god if you don't know why you are living you will keep escorting everybody in destiny and you will get old and find out that all you were doing was to be escorting others it's time to discover purpose if you cannot tell me why you are alive in one sentence you do not know it hallelujah i assure you you do not know it the first time i heard dr mas munro say this i said what kind of arrogant man is this but eventually i found out it's true hallelujah what is the color of your shirt aaron black simple say the color is the one that is not the white you don't know it what is the color of your shirt black what is the color of your own white period what are you here for don't talk greek and what are you here for if you don't know it go and flog it out with destiny because there are many people who do not know for the prophet he said while you were in your mother's womb there are many of you god has called you to wipe the tears of generations there are many of you god has called you to have ngos and conglomerates that will help people there are some of you who are entrepreneurs some of you are evangelists some of you are going to be in the area of government some business some politics do you know what you are working for or you are just depending on your certificate and then ladies hoping that one man will come and then you ask the man what what are you and the guy say i'm a preacher i said to him, i'm a preacher's wife is that what you are waiting for rise up on your feet i made this decision years ago i cried in abu dam i said god i will not leave this place till you open up the portals of destiny for me i must know what i'm on earth here for today i thank god for knowing why i'm here on earth because many lives have been blessed and this is only the beginning of great things to come many of you who have discovered destiny have you been working in it go back and listen to this thing provoke yourself don't let a generation die you have the destiny of a generation upon your shoulder lift your voice and begin to pray say lord i thank you for this word tonight the price katapalata kabaria my generation will hear my voice in the name that is above all names jesus was born in a manger no one saw him except a few people when he was about going to heaven a crowd was there watching him 
you came to this earth only a few nurses and doctors saw you who is it that will see your life and say thank god that he came and lived i was watching a documentary of archbishop benson idahosa and they wrote they said he came he saw and he conquered can that be your testimony lift your voice and begin to pray that will be my testimony in this life that a young man came he saw he shook the sands of time i will shake my generation with the power of god i will shake my generation with the life of god i will bring sinners to the saving knowledge of god we will go to nations i tell you i've been saying this thing for years lift your voice and pray we are rounding up pray the holy ghost is here say i'm not ordinary i refuse excuses i'm ready to begin to take a definite journey no matter what the limits are i take off the limits lord together with you we are an unbeatable team you are the prayer point of someone on the way to happen someone has been praying the bible says the earnest expectation of creation waited for the manifestation of the sons of god don't say i am weak don't say i am small don't say i am local no take off the limits nigeria will hear voice pray it africa will hear my voice in the name that is above every other name i would take the word of the lord the counsel of the lord i will stand before nobles I will stand before royalties and they will hear the wisdom of the Lord. Nothing will stop me. I'm an infant of fire going by the power of the Holy Ghost. No devil born in hell can stop me. Pray. Say I will build that hospital by the power of the Holy Ghost. I will build that airport. I will build that bank by the power of the Holy Ghost. I will be that kingdom financier pray say I will be that prophet I will be that apostle it does not yet appear but the mantle is on you I tell you rise great one hear the voice of the Lord I speak to you almighty man of valor almighty woman of valor just walk with God he will make a wonder no matter what your disadvantages are Yes, you are not in school yet. That's not an excuse. You cannot speak English. You lost your parents. You've not gotten a job. You are not married yet. You don't have children yet. That's not an excuse. Make up your mind. I go through the process. Pray. Say, Lord, I pay the price. The price of diligence the price of prayer the price of fasting i go for knowledge i pay the price i pay the price for financial prosperity i pay the price for the anointing i pay the price for the influence of the spirit i pay the price of diligence hallelujah hallelujah there are many of you you're already paying your price in school right now avoid that laziness if you are a student don't leave us if you have graduated stop that fake and useless life you are paying a price you may so Gary drink it honorably you may have one shirt wear it honorably once upon a time we could not afford these things but today by grace he has helped us you will remain that way so don't behave as if you remain that way don't try to look for things around you to define you be proud of where you are start it honorably you may not have food to eat but you can pray and say lord i know this is only for a while a day will come i will feed nations in one minute say lord hold my hands and let's walk to destiny hold my hands hold my hands strengthen my hands oh god lift your voice and cry for it's a year of supernatural exploits lord hold my hands hold my hands through challenges 
where I want to give up, oh God. He said, and when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Say, Lord, tonight I make a vow and a commitment. If I perish, I perish, but I must leave destiny. If I perish, no going back. I burn the bridge behind me. There may be sufferings for a while. There may be constraints for a while. You will give up a lot of things for a while. But it's not compared, I tell you, it's not compared to that glorious destiny, that enviable destiny. The shepherd boy became a king. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Now very quickly you are in this place. The journey starts with Jesus Christ. There are many of you who love the Lord and God brought you here. Tonight is a real destiny encounter. God took you from wherever and brought you here. Inside and outside you are hearing my voice and the spirit of the Lord is telling you you need to make it right with God. You've been a Christian but you've never really made a commitment for the Lord Jesus Christ. Or you've been born again, but you've just derailed from the path of God. There is love in this place. No one condemns you. It's time for a fresh start. There's no point delaying. Destiny is calling. I'm telling you, many of you will hear this voice echo your spirit. Hallelujah. I'm going to invite you right now. Leave your seat inside and outside those who want to make a fresh start and you're saying lord i surrender totally hold my hands and let's begin this part of destiny i give my life to christ oh lord i come back restored leave your seat and come out here quickly quickly the lord is talking to some people inside and outside the spirit of god is talking to you appreciate them they are coming appreciate them they are coming keep clapping the lord is bringing them no matter how bad it is i'm telling you no matter how bad it is start a real journey mean it from your heart outside the lord is calling you outside the lord is calling you keep coming keep coming begin a journey of destiny keep coming don't sit down there while the Lord is talking to you. Don't be ashamed of your friend. You need Jesus Christ. He's the fountain of life. It all starts with him. It all starts with him. He said, come unto me, all ye that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Keep coming. The Holy Ghost is still speaking to men and women. There's no point sitting back. Brothers and sisters, there's no point. This is an opportunity. You may be beautiful, you may be handsome, but let your destiny look like you. Keep coming. God is speaking. Don't assume. It's an opportunity for destiny. You've never made a decision for Jesus. Even if you have a Christian name, it won't take you to heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much brothers and sisters for coming out here some of you are coming out to make jesus lord of your life you're saying lord it's over i'll stop struggling the bible says in the day that you hear his voice harden not your heart for some of you you have given your heart to the lord but you want to make a genuine commitment no matter how many times you have made it don't be disappointed with yourself we are here to love you we are here to help you there is always a new beginning he said remember not the former things nor consider the things of old for behold i do a new thing god is doing a new thing lift your right hands those of you in front here and as loud as you can i want you to say after me lord jesus i come before you please mean it from your heart you are not reciting a poem lord jesus i come before you unable to help myself but today I surrender all I surrender everything I denounce sin and Satan I make up my mind to begin a journey with the Lord Jesus no going back I receive eternal life into my spirit be my Savior and my Lord Holy Spirit come upon me powerfully 
and empower me to live the victorious Christian life. My generation will hear my voice. The things I used to do, I will do them no more because the power of the Holy Spirit enables me. From today, I'm a genuine, I'm, I'm a saved person. Genuinely saved. I break away from wrong associations and influences over my life. I begin a journey in the name of Jesus. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you for my brothers and sisters. It's my privilege to lead them to your throne. We thank you. This is what this is all about. Some of them are rededicating their hearts to you and some of them are making fresh commitments. Lord, you see their tears and you see the depth of their commitment. I break habits right now. Every habit that is not consistent with the word of God, I break it in the name of Jesus. I command you to be delivered from every stronghold that has brought you here by the power of the Holy Ghost. I declare that from today, your transformation becomes evident in the presence of everyone. I bless you with the blessings of the Lord. I bless you with a fresh hunger for his presence. I bless you with a fresh hunger for prayer. I declare that you will never be the same. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Lift your hands and bless him. Tell him, Lord, I worship you. Just bless the name of the Lord. Mighty is his presence in this place. Jesus. Just bless him. Bless him in other tongues. He's faithful. Bless his name. Down at your feet of Lord is the most high It's in your presence I see your face. I see your face. And you sing it one more time down at your feet. Down at your feet. Oh, oh, oh. It's the most I play. I play in your presence, Lord.
without us. What you have chosen by grace to make us part of what you are doing. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. It remains a privilege every time we gather before you. Lord, I thank you for your people. They have come from all over. They will never go back the same. Because the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Thank you, Lord, because you will grant liberty tonight. Let the oppressed be free. Let the sick be healed. Let those who are confused find direction. I honor the name of the Lord. I bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please walk to ten people and just greet them. Ten people. Lord, we bless your name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, bless our hearts tonight. Holy Spirit, we will never be tired of calling upon your name. Because Jesus left you with us to teach us. And when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide us into all truth. He will cause us to see and to know, and to comprehend spiritual things. We thank you for the privilege and the opportunity. Lord, we bless you. For the spirit of the living God. We are not ashamed to declare how helpless we are without you. You are the fountain of wisdom. It's in your light that we see light. Bless the name of the Lord. For his glorious presence in this place. The presence that can change. You have changed the stories of people. Lord, day and night we hear testimonies of the hand of God. The wonder-working power you have made sinners to come into the fold. Many have been filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. You have anointed men and women. You have broken habits. You have broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder. You have opened for us the two leaf gates and caused us to walk in freedom. See what you've done with our lives, oh God. You have taken the ordinary things and you have made wonders out of our lives. Lord, we acknowledge the way you transform people in this place. It's mighty. It can only happen by the Spirit. You're giving many testimonies of transformation, healing definition of their lives you are setting men apart for the things that you will be doing Lord we bless you we bless you we bless you we bless you these are not the works of men it is the presence of the living God walking in the midst of his people and so we choose to say thank you hallelujah I bless your name and I pray that tonight it will not be different change somebody 
your people have come from their homes from other states except you help us tonight we cannot help ourselves but we trust the power of your spirit that great spirit of the living God open to us the bread of the spirit grant us access into the deep things of God let the word equip us prepare us separate us make a wonder out of our lives we are available we give you all the praise for the glory of your name that Jesus will be glorified in our lives we're not interested in shadows we want the substance you are worthy worthy of my praise you're the king of kings lord of lords this is our prayer lord let your kingdom reign in my life Of the 
Spirit of God, I feel your touch in my life. Yeah. Holy Ghost, you are the Spirit of God. You are the Spirit of God. I feel your touch in my life. Holy Ghost, comfort her. Make my life comfortable. Teach her. Teach me all I need to know. You are the Spirit of God. You are the Spirit of God. I feel your touch in my life. Oh, Ghost. You are the Spirit of God. You are the Spirit of God. I feel, I feel your, your touch in, in my life. Oh, 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 Ghost. I will sing of the wonders of your love. I will sing of your love. I will sing of the wonders of your love. I will forever sing your praise. Listen, your spirit opens to me. The treasures of your word. That's why, your oh Lord, I will forever sing your praise. Your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word. That's why I will forever sing your praise. I will see. I will see. Of the wonders of your life, I will sing out for joy. I'll sing of the wonders of your work, and I will forever sing your praise. Bless you. Let the name of the Lord be exalted. Blessed is the Lord Most High. Let the bride of the Lord say, Come. We will give you no rest, O Lord, until you inhabit the praises of your people and you turn your Jerusalem into a holy place.
Just soak in His glory for a minute. His mighty presence. God is healing, healing sicknesses, revealing anointing in this place. Shalom, 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 Jerusalem, shalom, 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 shalom. Shalom, 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 Jerusalem. Shalom, shalom. Koinonia, peace be to you. When Messiah comes to take us home, may His praise be found in you. Shalom, shalom. Jerusalem, hey, I prophesy peace to you. I prophesy peace to you when Messiah comes to take us home. May his praise be found in you. I speak to every storm in this place. Shalom, Shalom, Jerusalem. Peace be to you. Now that Messiah is in this place, he's come to take it away. Let his praise be found in you. I'm prophesying to you. Shalom, epakatabalataba. Shalom, koinonia, the bride of Christ. Peace be to you. Peace be to you. Let this be a place of peace. Let it be a place of power. Let it be a place of breakthrough. Let it be a place of intimacy. Bless his name. You may not realize what has happened to you.
have come to the end of ourselves. Take over, Jehovah. We have touched the end of ourselves. Take over now, Jehovah. We have come to the end of ourselves. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We have come to the end of ourselves, so take over, take over, we have come to the end of ourselves, take over, take over, we have come to the end of ourselves, can you personalize it, take over Lord, take over, I have come to the end of myself. Take over, take over. We have come to the end of myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We have come to the end of ourselves. Just the voices. Sing it from your heart. Come on. Take over. Take over. Lord, we have come to the end of ourselves. Take over. When you come to the end of yourself, then you will see his glory. It's a powerful song of dedication. You will always rejoice when you come to the end of yourself. That's when flesh dies and you release the spirit. Hey, take over, yeah. Lord, we have come to the end of ourselves. Take over, take over. about to share in this few minutes i pray from my heart that it will change you and set you on fire i pray that it will change you i pray that it will change you and do something remarkable in your life hallelujah praise the lord let's get to the word of god bless you it's good to have everyone around Make sure you have something to write. The presence of God is mighty in this place. Hallelujah. I want to teach on something very powerful. I want to share with you a very big secret tonight. And for as many who will consider it to be valuable I pray that many years from now it will make you a sign and a wonder because I am aware by now that not everybody is really interested in the things of the spirit just leave her alone hallelujah there will be a lot of impartations tonight because of what I'm about to teach hallelujah I want you to be sensitive 
Open your eyes. Will you open your ears? And then you'll understand that His presence is here. Open your eyes. If you open your ears, then you'll understand. Hallelujah. I want to teach tonight on the price for an extraordinary anointing. Never, never trivialize what you are about to hear. I, I'm here to preach my heart to you tonight. And I pray that somebody will take this seriously. May this message set somebody on fire. May this message answer the question somebody's heart the price for an extraordinary anointing hallelujah I've always wondered why certain people in this life seemed to be unusually extraordinary hallelujah why certain sportsmen were better than others why certain musicians and artists were better than others why certain preachers men and women of God what brought the power and the anointing of the spirit so mightily upon their lives when you read through church history you will see an archive of men that walked like gods upon the earth now there were others who did nice great things little thing here and there but there were others who were too extraordinary to be neglected they shook cities single-handedly there was there was such a degree of the demonstration of the Holy Spirit upon their lives. Hallelujah. And I made up my mind years ago that my life was not going to be extraordinary. My life was not going to be normal. Sorry. I made up my mind years ago that I was going to live an extremely extraordinary life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, if you have done these things with the people that have gone ahead of us, and yet you said there is a generation that will do more, I want to be that generation. Every time I picked up my Bible and I read the things that the Word of God said would happen, He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believes on me, the works that I do, shall he also do, and greater works. And I carried my Bible and said, Lord, do you really mean this? Hallelujah. And I began to study the life of extraordinary people. I have spent a major part of my life studying extraordinary people in every area of life. Every area. Finance, ministry, leadership. What made them so extraordinary? Because I don't want to be a mediocre. Jesus was born in a manger. But when he was leaving heaven, there was a crowd to celebrate his departure. And I'm very disturbed, and I must say this, at the complacency that is upon especially preachers in the body of christ there is a very low standard that many men and women of god especially around this country have set for themselves there is no pressure to go the extra mile and do amazing things for the kingdom hallelujah when i listen to certain preachers the presence of god that came out of their lives were amazing it was compelling you could not deny that these people knew the holy spirit 
Are you listening to me? Very, very powerful. And one time I listened to William Branham. When I listened to his message, I was shaking. And the Holy Spirit told me, Abel, though dead, yet speaketh. What kind of anointing did men like Elisha carry that although they were dead, a dead body meandered that place and suddenly jacked up. Are there such people in the earth today? Are you listening to me? Am I challenging somebody? For desperate people do desperate things and we're pressing in. There's gotta be more, gotta be more. There's gotta be more than this. For desperate people do desperate things and we're pressing on. There's gotta be more, gotta be more. Help me sing. There's gotta be more than this. We are the desperate people. We want more, more, Lord. We are the desperate people. We want more, more, Lord. Cause I'm tired of the status quo. There's got to be more than this. Listen, there's got to be more than what we are watching on our television. Are you listening to me? There's got to be more than what we celebrate as ministry and power today. There's got to be more. This cannot be all of God. Certain people have become examples to let us know that there are possibilities that are obtained in God. It's just that the standard is high. The Bible says, who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? He lives in a hill and whoever will climb there will access some things. He said he shall receive a reward from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. I studied Ezekiel 47 and it challenged me. The Bible says, out of the east side of the temple, a river came out. And he said, an angel measured a thousand cubits. And it was to my ankles. That's a level. That's a measure of the anointing. But he didn't stop there. He said he measured another thousand cubits. And then it was to my knees. And the man would have chosen to stop there. But he said, I will go for more. And he measured a thousand cubits. And it was to his loins. And he said, although this is great, by now you are a celebrity, you are on every television, but he said there is still more. And the Bible says he measured a thousand cubits and it was a river, a, an overflowing river. And the Bible says wherever that river went, the fish that was dead would come alive. Hallelujah. My anthem every time is that there is more. There is more. If you're a lukewarm person who does not have any pressure to press, you won't be my friend. You won't like me. My life will offend you. The price for an extraordinary anointing. I made certain vows with my life that I was going to leave a mark upon this earth before I go to be with the Lord or He comes to find me working. I made up my mind that I was not just going to be that preacher with a nice congregation and just having people and join the rat race of preachers fighting themselves and doing things as if the anointing has finished quarreling and writing things about them no that kind of life is for people who have refused to press higher hallelujah see let me tell you something the anointing of the Holy Spirit is God's energy. The anointing is God's ability to do work. Just like in physics, we define energy or we define power as the ability to do work per time. That's the definition of the anointing. The power of the Holy Ghost. Resident in a man that causes the man to produce extraordinary results. 
the Bible says in Isaiah 10, 27, it says, it shall come to pass in that day. Which day? The day you are interested enough to enter that dimension with the Spirit. That the burden shall be lifted from off thy neck and the yoke from thy shoulder. And it shall be destroyed because of the anointing. There are many preachers that go into ministry without the anointing. Many people trying to work for God. Many people trying to be great without the anointing. You have no ministry without the anointing. The anointing of the Spirit is God's agency. His ability that can be resident in a man. Causing that man to do extraordinary things. And if that ability is not in you, you cannot pretend it's there when it's not there. Because it speaks. Hallelujah. Every time I watch television, I get blessed, but I get disturbed in my spirit. When I see the satisfaction that is upon men of God as they preach, in my mind I'm saying, is this, was this the whole vision that they saw when they began with God? If no, what happened on the way? And then one time the Lord began to speak to me about the extraordinary anointing. And the Lord told me something that shocked me. He said, son, it is not up to me. It is entirely up to you to determine how far you want to go in the anointing. Many people think it's just God. He brings it whenever he wants. And if God likes you, he will just give it to you. If anybody has preached that to you, I'm telling you right now, right now, that is not true. Psalms 89 says, I have found my servant david he had to make himself available and with my holy oil have i anointed him hallelujah every time we watch extraordinary people during the olympic the attention of the whole world were on a few who did extraordinary things their age their gender their race their background notwithstanding the world has always stood in honor of extraordinary people. Ordinary people have not done anything to the world. When they give people Nobel Prize, it's because they did extraordinary things. Hallelujah. And I want to challenge you tonight that there is a dimension in God that you can press into and you will access not just an anointing, an extraordinary anointing. There are many people who claim to be prophets in this country. And you see that they, they are really called. But they have not contended to those dimensions in God. There are prophets who look like pastors or deacons. No pressure to contend for the deep things of the spirit. I was studying the gospels and I started crying. You know why I cried? Because in Bible times, all people needed to do was to locate Jesus Christ or any environment where he was around. Whether or not they would be healed was not the issue. They knew that once they saw Jesus Christ, that was it. Powerful dimension of grace. At what level in the church will people say, all I need to do, take me to that place. When I get there, I will find God. When I get there, no matter what the problem is, there must be a solution. Right now, to get to a place where a man of God is, is only the first question answered. The second question is to hope. Hope that at least God will attend to me. And every time this is my cry, I say, Lord, don't send me if I'm going to be an ordinary person. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Someone spoke to me one day and said, Josh, I think you need to go on air. I said, me? I will never go on air until I have a message for the body of Christ. Are you hearing me? I'm not going to go on air and have somebody scroll my channel and say, wow, he's a nice man of God. Next. No, no, no. There's got to be something extraordinary. This is what I, I made up my mind. That will never officially begin to record koinonia messages until there was something that was substantial enough for the body of Christ to have. 
There are many people writing books and tapes that are empty. They have no power and no ability. They are just psychological jargons. No power to change people. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, the Bible says, with the Holy Ghost and with power. And the Bible says that he had the spirit without measure. And he went about doing good and healing all day that were oppressed of the devil. Acts 10, 38. I made up my mind that I was going to explore. See, can I tell you the truth? As far as I'm concerned, I've not started ministry yet. I feel very sad when I see a lot of people. They don't say I've been five years in ministry seven years i tell them keep quiet what is ministry ministry is representing god being an ambassador how much what have you done what mark have you made when i begin ministry the world will know the bible says john remained in the wilderness until his season of appearing many people just get up they start churches they gather people they have no message they have no nothing what do you have that has not been heard before the bible says there is a path which no fowl knoweth and a path which the feet of the lion has not trodden many men of god what is happening in this country is just a repetition copy and paste of spiritual things there is no new but the bible says remember not the former things nor consider the things of old see behold i do a new thing hallelujah nelson mandela became sick and he kept the world at a standstill christians non-christian and everybody was praying when obama came he had to go and visit him listen this is this is amazing what made him an extraordinary leader my, my first challenge for you tonight is that you must refuse to be ordinary in life I want to challenge you you must refuse it's a determination it's a decision i refuse to be extraordinary call it pride i don't care hallelujah there is a level where you can gain hold of an extraordinary anointing it will produce an extraordinary ministry it will produce an extraordinary life Kenneth Hagin of blessed memory, a man who lived an extraordinary life. He had such a, a mighty anointing upon him. William Branham, I watched the video of Jaco, and they brought a lady who had cancer. Are you following me now? It was, it was a growth, it was swollen. I watched it, it's not like they told me. This guy held it and peeled it away. He was even sitting on a chair. He held it, peeled the cancer away. No blood. He was showing people. What is our boasting? What is our bragging for? I made up my mind I will never officially celebrate my birthday until I have a reason to celebrate. Birthdays is not a celebration of the day you were born. It was a celebration of, for what you are doing, what you were called to do, what you are living for. Are you listening to me? When I watch the videos of these people, I, I get broken. Mighty men. William Branham would move and because of the degree of anointing that was upon him, a hollow will move together with him. Catherine Kuman was so full of the Holy Ghost. She carried the anointing to a point that one time on stage she had crossed the stage yet she was still floating. She didn't even realize it. Who through faith subdued kingdoms who are these men who are this strange breed of people that defied the ordinary status quo of their days and told themselves they were going to press the difference between extraordinary listen to me please the difference between extraordinary and ordinary is that word extra hallelujah every time I want to counsel people i just say lord are these people going to gather and i'll just waste their time or will they really receive something can i tell you something 
the body of Christ is so frustrated. Many people are frustrated because preachers make a lot of mouth about things they have no anointing to defend. Hallelujah. A lot of preachers come and we brag and we make all kinds of noise. Oh, if God doesn't heal you, you don't have faith. Blah, 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 blah. And now the sick people come and they go back. And then they run to herbalists. And we have, we carry our big mouths and we criticize them. When the herbalist in a village is doing what a preacher has refused to do. And people are desperate for help, they will do anything. Including leaving your church or your ministry. And they will find solutions. Are you listening to me? Jesus climbed the mountain, a crowd followed him there. Jesus went to the wilderness, a crowd followed him there. He was in a room, the Bible says a whole city came and filled there. Men who knew that they were going to get substance. There is a lot of wastage happening in the body of Christ. Men and women of God just joking around and playing around. And the, the circumference of all what we call anointing. The moment a man of God's dream is to get to the point where you can touch somebody or blow air and somebody falls. It's enough demonstration to people that you are anointed. People fall down, get up and clean themselves. Nothing changes. Hallelujah. There are certain meetings in my life. I entered some of those meetings just once, but I will never forget. Hallelujah. Never forget. T.L. Osborne entered only one meeting. One meeting of William Branham. Just one. And it set him on fire forever. Just one. I told God, I said, Lord, the deadline for transformation in any life in Koinonia is two meetings. Two meetings. Every time I pray, I said, Lord, let it not be that somebody will come for Koinonia at least twice and not be changed. And you ask the person, how was service? Say, wow, it was nice. But that somebody will come and at the end of it, he cannot even talk. The person is just on his way going and you're saying, what happened? He said, I can't, I can't begin to describe. The impartation, I don't know if it was impartation I got or revelation I got. I don't know. I know that I got something. You'll be like a snake that swallowed something else. It can't move until after some days where you know that God is in this place. There are people seated here who are sick. There are people who are oppressed. And we men of God feel it's not an issue. And, and you know, shame on we preachers to an extent that whenever you see people being delivered and free men of god begin to get angry and criticize this is how much we are not even interested in the agenda of god someone gets free someone gets delivered see let me tell you something i made up my mind the bible says he who walks with the wise shall be what he who walks with the great shall be what he who walks with the extraordinary shall be what I love everybody, but I will not follow everybody. I am determined to make sure that a lot will be done for the kingdom of God in my lifetime. This is why there is no satisfaction. I've had one or two awards that were given to me. You will never find them on my table. Those things are deceitful. Very deceitful. A word that a few people just came together and said, take, you did this and that. You now place it and you are smiling and it's lying to you. See, when I was in secondary school, it was in a local government where, you know, many people were not even serious with their studies. So we were the best, we were the best school in that local government. What we call local champion. If we came for debate in your school, just start crying. By that standard. Hallelujah. Until we made up our minds one day.
to visit a school that was used to competing with people going state by state that day they showed us that the ceiling of somebody else can be the foundation of the next building hallelujah when i came back listen when i came back from that debate i was ashamed of myself i ran to the state library i had been the best student in my class until i tried writing jam mats after five hours i got four four one two three four i checked the back of jam brochure and they said there were certain people that got 300 and something i said joshua selma you are joking many of us have lived in circles that have lied to us too much we think the whole world is like our little community hallelujah that's how many men of god are they, they have surrounded themselves by with psychophants and liars who make them feel they have every anointing in the world then one day you go and try something that you don't have grace for and you receive a root shock then you begin to say it's not true this thing didn't work for me anybody that is doing it is not of god this is fake shut up that you are lazy and you are not pressing does not mean everybody has refused to press there are people who will not stop are you listening to me the price for an extraordinary anointing there can be more than what you have seen there can be more there can be more many of us stopped pursuing god the day somebody fell down under the anointing you don't know whether it was you or it was the person's prayer you just know it happened around you from that day you were convinced whenever you go for meetings and they are ministering to people you are waiting for them to say ministers come and lay hands they say ministers you get up what do you have what do you have how many how many of it he said listen he said what do you have in your house he said i won't lie i have something but it's little sometimes you need to accept that you have but what you have is not enough the woman said i have oil but it's in a small cruise the prophet said all right let me show you something that can expand the oil for you she never would have believed that there can be more hallelujah i get very very i get very disturbed when i see people go for meetings and to worsen the case you want to see the disorganization of men of god wait until the anointing begins to break out in a meeting every man of god's body is itching him everybody wants to hold the mic god has not finished or just wait there, there, there are some people there at the back at the back all these all these things we are doing for 10 minutes you are talking you are just it's like starting a generator go and sit down there are certain people catherine kuman before she got to the venue of the meeting kilometers away people started falling under the anointing this is how they knew catherine kuman was coming one time she finished the meeting and they were pressing her and they had to follow her through a kitchen door the moment they opened the door all the chefs all of them were under the anointing until she passed she was not praying this was her default state hallelujah am i challenging you tonight sometimes when people call me to come and minister as soon as i finish the ministration i don't even want to hear any comments because i have to run in my mind i've left zaria in my mind i've left nigeria i will not be fooled the future of eni is in that letter i international if you think what we have now is enough to feed the world go and sit down how many of you have seen people produce poster and when you are seeing it on the laptop you think that's the best poster you have produced is when you print it out and paste it you see that it's as ordinary as the ones around i refuse to be ordinary there is a realm in god listen can i tell you when you hit that realm you will start resting you have entered the sabbath of greatness you will rest until you get to the seventh day do not rest i'm going to share with you four keys 
Number one. This is not what I'm just preaching. These are keys that I've made up my mind that they will be part of my life. Can I tell you something? Look at me. God is challenging some of you tonight. Some of you have not backslided, but you have not you have stopped growing. You've not backslided, but you are there are many preachers in Nigeria that have stopped growing. They've not gone back, but they are in the same realm for a long time. It's just because where they have gotten to is, is substantially great. And it has been able to achieve one or two things. May your life produce the wonder that the world has not seen. May your life be the vehicle that God will reveal the more part of him that many people have not seen. Number one. You want to have an extraordinary anointing. The first price to pay is the price of consecration. The price of consecration. I will run very fast. Joshua 3 verse 5. The price of consecration. You don't hear this message is preached in church. Many people don't care. When I talk of consecration, I'm not just talking about run away from ladies. No, no, no. That's not even what I'm talking about. Consecration. To consecrate means to set apart. Consecration requires absolute surrender. Joshua 3 verse 5. Joshua 3 verse 5. If you want the Lord to do mighty things through your life, can we read it? One to read. And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves. If you do that, what will happen? Tomorrow, the Lord will do wonders among you. You want to see wonders in your life? The first key is the price of consecration. Consecration requires absolute surrender. Everybody say absolute surrender. You will never have the extraordinary anointing when you have your own agenda. You just want to use God's anointing to do your own agenda. Uh -uh. When God calls you, his first assignment is to kill you. You die to yourself, to your ambitions. Listen, you do not know the degree of surrender that brings authentic power and anointing. How many of you remember that gentleman, Sadiq Ibrahim? Some of you will remember him. He was right here in Koinonia. This guy wanted to be, he was in a group called Highlanders in Port Harcourt. Very serious occultic group. And he wanted the power of invincibility. He wanted to be able to do great things. When he met the Habalist, the Habalist told him, you have to consecrate yourself. For three days and three nights, he was lying down in a graveyard. His eyes did not see any man. I'm telling you how the devil gives people power. Three days, he said in the night, he will see people come out of graves and move. And you were not supposed to shift. They will touch him. He said, many of you do not know that the anointing comes with a price. That's why you see, when you talk against a man who is truly anointed, whether you are right or wrong, God will punish you. Are you listening to me? Absolute surrender. Consecration requires enduring the pain of being different. Oh, it's painful to be different. Let me tell you. It's painful to ride a different, a different plane of life. When everybody is going this way. When this is their definition of success. Moses was in the backside for 40 years. When his age mates were ruling in Egypt, he left the luxury of Egypt to prepare for an extraordinary ministry. 40 years! At the end of it, he came back to Egypt. He said, I'm ready. Oh, you can know you are ready. And it will not be pride. You can know you are ready. There is a time called the season of appearance. Are you, are you listening to me? Years ago, 
I hope I'll be able to share a few stories today about myself. Years ago, when I started preparing, when the Lord showed me the visions of the extraordinary things I'll be doing, in my mind I said, Lord, will people believe these things? And then the Lord began, sometimes the Lord will hold me in a room. Three days I've not come out. My eyes has not seen the light. Three days. I would stay there just praying. Sometimes sleeping, I would wake up and I would lie down. And a mist, like a cloud, will literally come into the room. Like the shape of a man. A real mist, I'm not talking of some metaphysics hallucination. If you are seeing it, you are seeing it. If it's like it is not there, you are either seeing it. This is Sam. This is music director. Hallelujah. I had very strange experiences. And I knew that this was a preparation for an extraordinary ministry. Many of you, this is what has been happening to you. Hallelujah. But nobody has told you. They've not encouraged you to know. Are you, are you listening to me? Many of you, you don't even know. And you are not serious because you started joining people. You now want to run and go and start a church or a fellowship. You've not even done anything. Ella, you'll be my secretary. Matilda, you'll be the PA. You are the one who will bath me. You are the one who will dress me. You will be going to the restaurant for me. Say, God gave me a commission. He said, now my son, arise and raise me a generation. Sit down. He said, arise from his perspective. See, let me tell you something about the word of God. God speaks from the realm of eternity. Everybody say eternity. He speaks from the realm of eternity. There is no time. So when the word comes to you, it comes with such a strong urgency, you think you should get up and go immediately. You must sit down and find the time component of every prophecy. That's why when prophets heard from God, they said, according to the time of life. Are, are you following me? Thank you, Jesus. It's painful to stand out. Listen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's painful to stand out. It's painful to be unusual. It's painful to be controversial. If you are not ready, forget about an extraordinary anointing. These are strange and rare people. That's why many people cannot make it to that list. They are too conscious of themselves. You must die to yourself to carry an extraordinary anointing. They will talk about you. They, we are speaking about Satan and Jesus at the same time. Two extremes. No matter, you will have to be in between two of them. Different in your life. Different in your mindset. There are ways they do things in your house. Now you make up your mind and say, no way. These sacrifices and this idolatry and the rest count me out. This is not going to be part of my life. I'm preparing for an extraordinary life. And people look at you. Say, so this thing has been there for how many years? Until the reward comes, you will look foolish. So let it not be strange to you. When you get to this realm, you will die to yourself. Literally. Everybody say the price of consecration. Many people do not like this. You know what? See? One of the biggest problems with the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, especially the American church, and now it's coming into Nigeria, we love comfort too much. Are you listening to me? The Holy Spirit is called the comforter. But listen, I need you to know that any sensible man knows that you don't get comfort from day one. When they give birth to a child, the first thing he receives is a slap. That's a sign to show that he's alive. Are you hearing me? Many people want pampering. We have built churches that want pampering. You say something that is striking. People say, we don't like this kind of preaching. No? We'll stop sowing into this ministry. And the man of God said, alright, we'll, we'll, we'll think of how to, to arrange it. May Koinonia never become the place that will water down truth because we are looking for money. Hallelujah. 
Everybody say the price of consecration. Before David was anointed, Psalm 89 said, I have found. Do you know what it means for God to find a man? The psalmist said, where can we hide from your presence? Yet God is saying, finally I found you. Because many people just want comfort. We want to use the anointing of God to accomplish our own agenda. And so the first thing is you must die to yourself and die to your agenda. I was listening to Benny Hinn. He was talking to some youths. And he was telling them, he said, look, you people do not know the price that brought this level of anointing to my life. He said, I don't know the, name of, the names of footballers. I don't know the names of music artists. He said one time his son asked him to take him to a basketball place. He said when he got there and he saw people jumping, he could not understand what they were enjoying. The anointing will change you. It will make you strange. People will say you didn't used to be like this. Where has your social life gone to? What happened? You will find it in the future. Give it up now. There are pastors who do visitation from Sunday to Sunday. Even Sunday morning, they quickly visit a rich man's house before they run to church. And then they believe that they are going to get an extraordinary ministry. And then many people now want methods. Young Cho went to preach somewhere. He pastors one of the largest churches in the world. Hallelujah. And many Americans just sat down with their notepad. They believe he was going to give them 31 guaranteed methods. You know, this is what we like now. Do this. Add A to B to C. This will happen. Young Cho came up. He doesn't speak English too well. Paraphrasing. He said, you people don't pray. You are not serious. You just sit down. You want the anointing. And he went and sat down. That was the end of his message. It was a prophetic rebuke. Authentic prophetic. Bible type prophetic rebuke. Hallelujah. That was the message. He who had an ear in that meeting should hear. Go back to the secret place. We like methods. Right now we read all kinds of psychological books. Unbelievers are writing books to govern church ministry. How to attract a crowd. 20 quick ways. Guaranteed. And many gullible men of God who are lazy just get up. You see them watching CDs. You would think it's something that will provoke them. A motivational speaker sits down. He says, when you come, start with a story. When you start with a story, use an example. When you do that, do this and that. You tried it, it didn't work because you are in Nigeria. Everybody say it. Nigeria. Nigerians have not been trained to tolerate nonsense. We are coming out from witchcraft straight. We are looking for something authentic. You don't come and tell people these jargons and junks. They will manage it for two days. They will laugh. We'll, we'll. When it gets bad, they will call you and say, Pastor, I sowed a seed. I prayed. It's not working. If you don't respond to me by next week, you will see me in your church again. Hallelujah. The price of consecration. Listen. Every great man knows that you must give up something to go up. Did you hear what I'm saying? You must give up something to go up. Politicians know this. By 1 a.m., you are sleeping. A politician is in a harborless house just to get little political office. What has made the body of Christ so lazy? I believe in seed faith. But let me tell you the truth. If you want an extraordinary life, it's beyond money. Are you listening to me? It's even beyond impartation. A time will come you must dig your own well. Your customized dealing with the spirit. When you get it, you will know those who are having what is not it. If you are the best student in your class and you see the dullest student getting 99, you know something happened. Because you know what you are doing that makes you the best. Hallelujah. Many believers cannot detect error because they themselves have not entered the substance. Hallelujah. The price of consecration. Revelations 18 verse 4. Revelations 18 verse 4. 
powerful statement he said come out of her my people that you will not partake of her sins that her plague will not come upon you the lord is speaking to his bride he said come out of her my people come out of that status quo hallelujah and i heard a voice another voice from heaven saying come out of her my people that ye be not partakers of her sins that ye not receive her plagues. Everybody say, I'm coming out. Refuse it. Refuse it. You want to be a man of God? You better, some of you are attracted at the vanities. You, you spend day and night browsing church structures. You believe that is how to be in ministry. hallelujah browsing church structures and then you finish you say this is the car and you gum it in your room and keep speaking it the car that will carry me look let me tell you something faith is not foolishness sit down and pay the price and tell the lord search my heart there are tendencies i don't know how it will be the day i see 500 members who are loyal to you and can open up their spirit the price of consecration you cannot want to live like any other person. I say it with all humility. You will not find me around just gallivanting around. You say, what are you doing? Say, today is a happy day. I just feel like strolling. I'm at the season of my life where I am still at the preparation stage for an extraordinary life. The moment I finish preaching in Koinonia, I run back and lectures continue. I'm in the school of the spirit. No amount of manifestation will stop it. When I go home, I just get on my knees and I say, Lord, I thank you for what you did. I thank you for the mighty things that happened. And the Lord says, let's continue. Well done, but let's continue. The journey is still far. Everybody say, I choose to sanctify myself. Say it, I choose to sanctify myself. There are many things that take our attention in the body of Christ. Computer games. Some of you is movies. You can watch movie from morning. You only stop to eat lunch. Minute you finish. Which part? Which part did I watch that guy? As as a lady finally told him yes. Which part? You just come and sit down. The food will burn there. Later I say, off it for me, please. And they ask you, say, what do you want to become? Say like Benny Hinn, huh? Hallelujah. an extraordinary life listen let me tell you you must prepare for an extraordinary life that's why oftentimes god will separate people away he took moses in the wilderness he was alone the price of consecration second timothy 2 the last scripture let's run verse 19 to 21 the Bible says, Nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let every man that named the name of Christ depart from iniquity. The next verse says, But in a great house, there are not only vessels, listen, not only vessels of gold and silver, but vessels of wood and clay, or some versions say earth. He says, Some are unto honor. That means it's your choice. There are vessels in a great house, but not every vessel is unto honor. He says, Some are unto honor, and some are unto what? Dishonor. Here's the condition. He says, If a man will purge, separate, consecrate, sanctify himself, he said, That man will be a vessel unto honor, meet, fit, prepared, equipped for the master's use. Say, I'm a vessel unto honor. The price of consecration. The price of consecration. There are many of you, every time you hear the word price, you don't like it. Let's drink ice cream. Hallelujah. Do you have money? No, 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 no. Don't mention it. We, we hate anything that has to do with price. The Bible says, Romans chapter 8 from verse 18. It says, I reckon, I come to terms with this fact. That the sufferings of this present time 
is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in you. That's what the Bible says. I reckon that the sufferings, that means there are temporary setbacks. The sufferings of this present time. What time? The time of your preparation. It's not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in you. Verse 19 says, For the earnest expectation of creation waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. Number two. The price of revelation and real intimacy with the Holy Spirit. You want an extraordinary anointing? This is the second price. The price of revelation the price of revelation and real intimacy with the Holy Spirit. You will never be able to live an extraordinary life. You can never have an extraordinary ministry if you do not know the person of the Holy Spirit and you do not have revelation. Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 17 to 19. Paul began to pray and say, For this cause I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ that he may grant unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him 18 says the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that ye may know enlightenment you want to be great in life you must go for knowledge you must go for knowledge you must go for knowledge are you hearing me you must go for knowledge you can't be great in ignorance no the bible says in hosea chapter 4 verse 6 it says my people perish for lack of knowledge satan is only as powerful as our ignorance will allow him success is very predictable when you understand the laws that govern it knowledge many of us don't go for revelation you don't contend you must become a student of the bible if you want an extraordinary anointing are you listening to me you must become a student not just a recipient many of us want things from god but we are not serious with the word of god how amiable are your word oh lord they are my meditation all day long i'm obsessed with the word of god i think the word of god my conversations are governed after the word and i'm not just doing it to preach if you are just preparing sermons people will know you can't pretend it forever he said thy word oh god have i hidden in my heart this is how you prepare for an extraordinary life. Be full of the word. Be full of the word. Be full of the word. You want an extraordinary life? Get back to the Bible. Go and sit down. Beyond morning devotion. My son, pay attention to my words. Proverbs 4. Incline your ears to my sayings. The Bible says, Do not let them depart from out of thy eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. He said they are life to those who find them. That means not everybody is interested. But they are life to those who find them. And health to their flesh. The Bible says forever, O Lord, thy word is settled. Hebrews 11 from verse 1. The Bible says now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. He said for by it the elders obtained a good report. The Bible says through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. The worlds were framed by the word of God. The price of revelation. People who are extraordinarily anointed are men of the word. When you see a man who is anointed, when I talk of the word, I'm not talking of quoting the word. You will know they submit to the governing authority of the word. Being a student of the word is not just about talking it. There is a way you, you submit. Like you submit to a man. You have submitted to the authority of the word. Many of us read the word. But we have not submitted. To submit to the word of God means the word of God becomes the final opinion in your life. No matter what your argument is. When they bring the word of God, it ends every contention. John 5 7 Jesus speaking he says if ye abide in me and my words abide in you if ye abide in me and my words abide in you very important 
His word must abide in you. Hallelujah. He says you will bear much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. Hallelujah. John 16 verse 13. Let's look at I'm just giving you these scriptures. John 16 verse 13. Can you look at it very quickly? John 16. God is changing somebody tonight. He said, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come. Listen, let me tell you something. Koinonia is called intimacy and partnership. The first thing is intimacy. You must contend for the knowledge of the Holy Spirit. It is in the knowledge of the Holy Spirit that you experience the gifts of the Spirit in your life. You cannot have the gifts of the Spirit and the anointing of the Holy Spirit independent of His presence. When He, the Spirit of truth, is come, He will guide you into how many? That means there are many truths. He will guide you into all of them. It says, For He shall not speak of Himself, but who, whosoever He shall hear, that shall He speak, and He will show you. He will show you. Hallelujah. Very important. Let me show you something Jesus said. John 14 verse 10. John 14 verse 10. The second prize, the second key to an extraordinary anointing. I just have four of them. John 14 verse 10. Believest thou not that I am in the Father. Now, this was Jesus doing extraordinary works. And these people were dumbfounded. And they wanted the secret of his power. Listen to what he was saying. He says, and the Father in me, the words that I speak unto you. He said, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. The Holy Ghost. That source and sustainer that lives in me. He said, he doeth the works. Every time you see a mighty man doing things, he's not the one doing it. There is somebody behind. I was not born like this. I wasn't born this way. That's my sister. My blood sister. I wasn't born this way it takes a commitment and a determination go for revelation it's too early to start looking for manifestation you are at the stage of preparation no matter how great you are if you can become no ma even if they make you a pastor of a church don't let titles make you graduate yourself from the school of the spirit go and sit down pastor femi is here he's the senior pastor in rema and you come and sit down quietly there are many people having his position now who start running. You must learn to sit down. Don't allow the applause that men are giving. Don't let it see. Don't let it take you away from the school of the spirit. Hear me tonight. There is more. It's time to eat because the journey is far. The angel told the prophet, he said, eat for the journey is far. He ate a little and he slept. The angel woke him again. He said, eat for the journey is far. And the Bible says he ate and he went in the strength of that bread, a 40 days journey. Number three. You want to see an extraordinary anointing in your life. The price of total obedience. Total obedience. Total obedience. Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5. For time's sake, we will not read it. Just read 5 to 10. Specifically verse 8. If you can project that verse 8. Sense the anointing of the Spirit in this place. Philippians 2 verse 8. The Bible says, And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became what? Obedient even unto death. Can I tell you something? There is a way you can be obedient that it will cost you. Are you listening to me? You must make up your mind whether you want to obey God or you want to obey men. It will cost you. It's called obedient unto death. Deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 and 2. It says it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I command you this day. That these blessings, uh, you know, I, I, will, I will exalt you, shall be above all nations. And this blessing shall come to you and overtake you. Then it begins to list downwards. 
Hallelujah. Very important. Matthew 7, the Bible says, He that heareth my words and doeth them. Not he that heareth my word and just dances. No. Obedience, 24 to 25. Matthew 7, 24 to 25. It's like unto a wise man that built his house upon the rock. I want to challenge you. Many of you, the reason why God is not working with you is because you don't have a heart to obey God. There are some of you here, the day God asks you to empty your account, you will bind and cast and lose and curse. And even write it as a prayer request. That voice that likes taking what God has given me. Obedience. Obedience. Everybody say obedience. Obedience will cost you. Obedience will cost you. They can give you a ministration somewhere. There are great ministrations that have been given and the Lord says no. No. I just tell the protocol, no, I'm not going. I don't need to tell lies and say, okay, something, uh -uh. I, I'm not going to go. I remember one time, there was a pastor who invited me and I was praying. At the same time, there was an NCCF meeting in Delta. And for three days, I kept seeing myself there. And I had to call him because I had given him my word. They were so excited. They were preparing. I said, Pastor, I'm sorry to tell you, but the Lord wants me to be, the Lord wants me to be in Delta. The pastor was so sad. In his mind, he say, so because my church is now not as big as a state conference. That's why you are not coming. No, not at all. I paid my transportation. I went there. And at the end of it, when I got there, the Lord told me, you are not collecting an honorarium. When they bring it, bless it and give them back. So it was not just, it was not for money at all. Obedience. Hallelujah. I've shared it. Well, it's, it's, not, it's not necessary. It's not something I'll say now. But somebody brought a huge gift for me one time this year. And when he brought it, I just looked at him. And I told him, I said, mm -mm. As he was, he was trying to offer me, I said, no way. Already God had told me no. How many of you can say no when God says no? How many of you can say yes when God says yes? You are afraid of being different. You are afraid of being criticized. You are not ready for an extraordinary anointing. Because one day, God will tell you to declare his counsel. And the fear of what men will say. Let me tell you something. Extraordinarily anointed people are stubborn people. They are men that can defy things. I don't mean rebellious. Mary said, whatsoever he tells you to do, do it. Someone met me one day and said, don't you think meeting once a week is too small for koinonia? I looked at the person, I said, back to sender. We don't do things just because we want to do it. No. As you see upon the mount, then you will do. If you do what God did not direct, you will defend it by yourself. Hallelujah. Obedience to the principles of the word. Obedience to the voice of the spirit. Many of us, when we started with God, one of the things that made our spiritual journey well was because we were living by the principles of God. Many of us are waiting for a word from God or a vision or a supernatural experience but you are not obeying the truth of God's word that you are seeing you want extraordinary finances you are not tithing you are not giving you see somebody coming every week to give tight say are, are you sure this guy is not pretending it? are you the only one God is blessing <laughs> the performance is for obedient people the performance is not just for hearers Make up your mind to obey the word. No matter what it will cost you. Hallelujah. The last scripture there. Jeremiah 7.23 Jeremiah 7.23 God is separating people in this place to give them extraordinary anointings. He said, but this thing commanded I them saying, obey my voice and I will be your God 
and ye shall be my people he said and walk ye in all the ways that i have commanded you that it may be well with you you want it to be well with you it will be on the wings of obedience hallelujah years ago after we came back from our crusade it was a powerful time pfn called us and they said we want you to come and establish a branch of your ministry they were ready to give us an auditorium and give us pastors to train i was excited i went to the lord the lord just answered me and said you will die that was exactly what i repeated to the people i said the lord said i will die obedience it's difficult to obey when you are going to lose a lot it's easy to obey when the obedience is on to gaining something immediate obedience i choose to obey the word i choose to live by his truth number four there are many of you who have done this three but the fourth key is what you have missed the price of consistency the price of consistency the price of consistency look at me everybody how many of you have seen someone cutting a tree do you know that if you keep hitting that tree it looks like nothing is happening there is one final hit that will cut the tree that was not the strongest hit. It was the most consistent one. Are you listening to me? Many of us, listen, and let me tell you something. One of the greatest lessons, or yes, one of the greatest lessons that the Lord has taught me in this life is that it pays to wait upon the Lord. Impatience has cheated many people out of the blessings of God in this life. We are in a hurry for everything. Everybody say the price of consistency. Consistently doing the same thing. Regardless of the outcome. Regardless of the outcome. You tie it and you don't see the blessing. You say, I'm not stopping. I'm not stopping. I know that God is behind his word. Great people in life are those who have done certain things consistently galatians 6 verse 9 do not be weary in well doing he said for we will reap in due season if we faint not do not be weary in well doing he said and let us not be weary in well doing for in due season we shall reap everybody say i will reap some of you have been coming for koinonia again and again six months things have not changed do not be wary if it is what you are doing well don't be wary the bible says you will reap because you are sowing the only way the devil can kill your harvest is to stop you from sowing the bible says he that sows unto the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption and he that sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap life eternal in first kings 18 from verse 30 to 46 we will not read it just write it down first kings 18 verse 30 to 46 the bible says elijah prayed seven times everybody say seven times if elijah stopped at the sixth time it would not work he had to pray how many times in fact the bible is so graphic it says he prayed the first time he sent the servant go and check the man said nothing oh consistency is what separates ordinary people and extraordinary people consistency consistency you pray no matter the outcome you study the word no matter the outcome consistency many of us when we are at the edge you are at the verge of a breakthrough that's when many of us give up hallelujah in second kings chapter 5 you read from verse 1 to 4 but let's just focus on verse 4 second kings 5 
the bible says the prophet had told naaman he said if you want to be clean go and dip yourself how many times seven times naaman was complaining and grumbling it didn't change him the bible says ah i thought they were protecting it hallelujah naaman dipped himself how many times don't worry just do your work media seven times do you know what it means to dip yourself many of you were baptized they dip you only once imagine a great man he entered the water he entered and came out he asked the slave girl, how many? She said, one. Do it again. He entered, came out. At the fourth time, he was already embarrassed. He was looking like mud. God said seven times, Mr. Man. Consistency. Consistency. There are many of you, you are looking for a prophet to prophesy to you. Nobody comes. God says, just continue doing what you are doing. That's the only prophetic word you need. Keep doing it. Pastor Chris will say what? How, how does he say it? Keep speaking it. Don't stop saying it. Be consistent. Some of you start preparing for an extraordinary life. And impatience will just cancel it out. How, and you know, see, it's dangerous because when you start a journey, you get to a point where you are in the middle. You, it's too far for you to go back and then you can't reach there. Many of us start the journey and you go back. You are traveling to Abuja. You've now gotten to Abuja Kaduna Expressway. And he said, Kai, this journey is too far. I went to Meduguri on, on road. I slept and woke up. I don't know how many times. I asked the driver, how many more hours? He said, six or seven. I said, what? We've been on this journey since. I had to sleep on the road. But did that mean we were missing the way? See, that you have to wait does not mean you made a wrong decision. Continue. John 6 verse 15. I mean Joshua 6 verse 15. The crossing of Jericho. Joshua 6 verse 15. The Bible says on that seventh day, you can imagine, to throw a big wall, God gave them an instruction. They went round once. The people in Jericho were wondering, who are these madmen? They had to die to themselves to know that whatever God tells you to do, it will work. On the seventh day, they now started going one, two, three, four, five. Madness. Six. At the seventh time, they blasted the trumpet. And the Bible tells us, see, the wall of Jericho did not fall down. It sank. Because the Bible says on the wall, five chariots could stand on it. So even if it falls, it will become another wall again. Sank. John 20 verse 11 when I was preparing these notes I just put all these scriptures and the Holy Spirit told me no there's one more my people must hear John 20 verse 11 the Bible says when Jesus resurrected all the disciples came and the one Jesus loved checked the tomb and they saw that Jesus was not there they checked once and they ran away but the Bible says Mary Magdalene stayed there everybody say consistency and when she checked again, suddenly she saw an angel. Consistency. Consistency requires patience. It requires uncommon patience. It requires grace. Hallelujah. Many people in ministry, they start. And then God is telling them, just be consistent. Don't compromise don't compromise teach your message it may not be popular but don't compromise if it, do you know that is impatience and lack of consistency that makes people to derail from the things of god and get into witchcraft they are looking for fast fast fame fast everything they want a jeep fast fast jeep one of the greatest revelations that god has put in me is the beauty of patience i can wait i've killed hurry from my life i can wait some of you are in a hurry for everything and this is your unbecoming you are in a hurry to you want 
digital hearing God now. Let you just say thank you, Jesus. And God just begins to talk. Five minutes later, he has finished. You say, I give you praise. Unfortunately, his system is not like that. They that wait. Hallelujah. Very important. Consistency. These four things are the things that I practice in my own life every time. And I'm determined not to stop it. This last one is probably new to many people. You are just seeing the power of consistency. Consistency. When you want to build a house, the workers come every day. They put three blocks today. Tomorrow they come again. They add four blocks. I was checking the database of Koinonia. And I found out we're getting close to 5,000. The database, people who have been blessed, who have come to worship. I remember when we started it, 20 people, new people, 40 people, 20 people today, 100 people, 60 people, 400 people. Consistency. Everybody say consistency. I play a bit of keyboard. When I started, I was fairly consistent. And then I stopped being consistent. Do I like keyboard? Yes. Am I blessed by it? Yes. Can I play like I can? No. Why? You are not consistent. You see why many people are not consistent in God's presence. That's why they don't know when God speaks a thing. Consistency. Consistency. That's why we have a lot of people who are not stable with spiritual things. You run to this man of God today. Abuja or Lagos or wherever. You say, man of God, my life must change. He said, come and sit down under the word. Two weeks later, I said, man of God, it has not changed though. He said, just continue. He said, oh, let me find one that can give this thing to me sharp, sharp. Many of us have entered into all kinds of things. All kinds of things. Everybody say, I will, I will continue. In the things that have started consistency let's do a quick review number one the price of consecration the price of consecration number two the price of revelation consecration will kill you you will take up the agenda of god and forget about your own agenda there are some of you who finish service you want to run and go for what god will say uh -uh, for you you are exempted the normal law is to look for a job you you are exempted you are a lady you finished you are just planning thank god i will get married god will say uh -uh, you are going to marry in the next three years give me these three years of your life say back to sender i've always known enemy of progress now that is my breakthrough it's my turn to shine consecration you must die to yourself you can't do everything there are many of us every program secular or christian you are there something happens in tj palace you come you are happy you just sit down there later i say Kai, it's time for fellowship let me run and you you wonder why your ears is as if they put cotton wool inside you can't hear god you always hear nonsense Samuel had the voice of God because he was lying down close to the ark. If you lie down close to the ark, you will hear the voice of God. An extraordinary life. I'm saying this today because it will happen by the Spirit. He and I will be an extraordinary ministry. I won't be. I have come to the end of my sin. Take over, Jehovah. I have touched the end of my sin. Listen, don't be in a hurry in your life. Stop following the plan that people have carved for themselves to define success. You will fall into a ditch you may not recover from. Receive the blueprint. When you see your life becoming strange, it's a sign that there is an uncommon call upon your life. Enjoy it. 
is working for others but when god gets to you you will train others and raise them but you god will say sit down there is a reason you are coming to the end of yourself i remember one man who god instructed and said until he buys 15 cars for people before he buys one for himself at the end of the third car the wife told him see i'm going to leave you i've been keeping quiet about this thing it's paining me because people started embarrassing the woman they say something is wrong with your husband and you are a foolish woman you won't go and do something about it 15 that was the instruction god gave him this guy will walk like an elephant and carry money and buy car a Jimmy's mother of blessed memory before she went to be with the lord she was preparing to buy a nice car for herself and then the lord gave her an instruction that she should buy a brand new Toyota Corolla and go and give one of her junior staff. How many people will slap you when you do that kind of thing? Ladies, if your husband comes and says, Honey, come and give me a hug first and a kiss. And you feel, you say, what, what is it? I can't wait. He said, God has spoken. Say, all right, sit down. Now, we are going to evacuate this house. Say, the Spirit of God. The house that you built with your own money they will call you from the village quick they'll say come back home before you come home they are prepared what will recover you from that mindset they'll say just drink this before we start talking because you are not well mad men are the ones who have changed this world uncommon people uncommon people uncommon people some of you have to trek long distances to come for koinonia every week but you are determined consistency go for revelation stop doing cheap ministry you will start insulting great people don't join that group stay with the spirit until you catch a substance of life when you have a message i promise you the world will hear you forget about money chase god you will find other things he said but seek ye first the kingdom seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness and all other things a time will come if somebody pays you one million per week he has insulted you you hold on if you can endure he that endures to the end not stop at the middle if you start a race a marathon and you're running assuming you're supposed to go around zaria you started from abu you are almost coming and you are at, you are at um, energy research and you collapse there will they say hey yeah we understand we saw your effort we'll be watching you when they list the names of those who are disqualified they will put your name there so the person who just started from here to aviation and stopped and you you have now been put in the same class everybody say i'll be consistent say i'll be consistent pray in tongues it's too early to pray and start saying oh i'm looking is something mm -mm. koinonia is where we are today because we have been consistent for four years god trained us we're coming every night people were sitting on the floor pastor williams and his wife with the kids sometimes will come all the way from sabo married people they will come and sleep in the students hostel they are looking for something tomorrow now somebody will see him and the wife will say how are we sure this woman said she's just chopping ripping where she didn't sow somebody spoke against um catherine Ma maria woodward eater she said the lord judge you the person's tongue became like banana until he wrote an official letter of apology and she slapped it back hallelujah i was told was it oedeko or, or adeboe that somebody saw the things that they were doing and the woman just hissed and trivialized it oedeko that woman was barring for i don't know how many years from the story one time she went to a prophet searching for solution the man wanted to pray for her and he said stop god is revealing to me that you have offended a great man of god this is what is responsible she called the name the woman packaged a seed don't worry those who are talking against you will sow into your life for recovery from their madness tomorrow just continue. continue anytime you see a great man 
I was I was speaking to my sister, you know, she was over at my place and I was talking to them. And I was telling them something. I said, one of the greatest things I've learned in life, listen to me. See, if you try to defend yourself, hear me, you are God, God doesn't have anything to do again. Are you listening to me? There are many of us. They just, you just pray for five hours. You want to explain to everybody. Ah, ah. Be convinced about this. At every point of your life, those who love you are greater than those who don't. Don't lose touch with those who truly love you and be focusing on a few people. Out of the twelve, it was only Judas who didn't love Jesus. Not eleven. Jesus focused on the people who loved him. Some of us want, who loves me? Do you like me? Do you don't like me? Do you don't like me? You say, why now? Let me, let me make you like me. Ah. Extraordinary people are lonely people. Lonely people. Until they arrive. And then everybody will see Moses was alone. They didn't come for visit for him. They didn't send any bounty from Egypt. They thought he was dead. But when God was done with him, he became a sign and a wonder. Are you ready to pray tonight? Rise up on your feet. Rise up on your feet. We are going to cry to the Lord. The Lord is calling you into an extraordinary anointing. Into an extraordinary anointing. We are going to pray for just five minutes. And we will round up. Hallelujah. Are you ready to pray? Are you ready to pray? Everyone hold your hands together and let's pray in tongues for just one minute. There's a realm. A realm of the extraordinary. The realm of champions. That's where world changers dwell. Is a mountain where the eagles dwell, not where the birds are, not where the chickens are. It's a pedestrian, it's a plane in the spirit. It's the place for mighty men, it's the place for great men, writers of history, history makers, world shakers. Ambassadors indeed, men whom the earth is not worthy of. Come on, pray. Point number one, Lord, I refuse an, extra, an ordinary life from today. I make a vow and a commitment. I will not be ordinary. Go ahead. Not in business. Not in leadership. Not in my job. Not in ministry. I contend for an extraordinary anointing. I refuse to be average. Not in ministry. An extraordinary healing ministry, an extraordinary deliverance ministry, an extraordinary preaching ministry, an extraordinary apostolic ministry, pray, an extraordinary prophetic ministry, extraordinary evangelical ministry, pray, I will be an extraordinary worshiper, an extraordinary worshiper, an extraordinary worshiper. An extraordinary businessman. Tell yourself. I am destined to be great. My parents may not know it. Pray. The people in my community may not know it. But I'm determined. I refuse. I refuse the ordinary. I refuse the ordinary. My name will be written in the sands of time. That I did terrible things in righteousness. 
Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. You are going to pray all of these four things. Grace to pay the price for consecration. Grace to pay the price for revelation and intimacy. Grace to pay the price for obedience. Grace to be consistent. You know where you have been, you have been faulting. Lift your voice and pray. Grace, oh God. Grace. 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 Shekete koto palatapa. Repos koparyadaba. Grace to separate myself from the cares of this world. Grace not to entangle myself with the lusts and appetites that hinder the anointing. Grace, lift your voice and cry. Shake prosko prekete kala and protosko maria. Grace to live a sanctified life. Grace to live a life that is set apart. Grace, grace, pay the price, pay the price. Lamentation Street 27. It is good that a young man bear his youth, his, his, his yoke in his youth. Pray for grace. Lift your voice and pray. Grace for revelation. Grace for revelation. Say Lord, grace to be a student of the word. I will buy books. I will buy tapes. Day and night. Day and night. I will sit with the word. Day and night. I will sit with the word. Pray for intimacy with the Holy Ghost. Tell yourself, Holy Spirit, I'm tired of pretending like I know you. I want to enter a tangible experience. I want to hear your voice. I want to walk with you. Koinonia. I long for that intimacy. Pray for grace to obey. Lift your voice and pray for grace. Grace to obey. Lord, I've been disobedient. Lift your voice and pray. Grace to obey. No matter what it will cost you, you will be different. They will mock you. They will criticize you. Every great man follow that path. You are not the first. You will not be the last. Enjoy it. Pass through it. Enjoy it. Pass through it. When you become great, your life will explain the process. Pass through it. Make up your mind to obey God. Be uncompromising. No matter what it will cost you. Finally, pray for consistency. Consistency. Some of you stop doing the things that brought you to this realm. That's why you've not gone higher. Lift your voice and pray. Consistency. I will stop fasting. I will stop fasting. I will stop praying. No. No. Nothing will make me stop fasting. Nothing will make me stop praying. I will stay with the word. I will read books. I will watch videos. I will spend time in worship. I will build myself. I will develop myself. I will learn from great people who have gone ahead of me. I will give my eyes no sleep until I do the things that will move me forward. No matter the commendations, I will let it get into me. I make up my mind to be consistent. To be consistent. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is a secret. This is a secret. There is nothing mysterious about it. An extraordinary anointing. Hallelujah. An extraordinary anointing. This is the secret to an extraordinary anointing. Lift your hands in one minute. I want to pray with you. Sit Lift your hands, everybody. I want to pray that grace will come upon you and make you walk in these realms. For many of you, this grace will come upon you in a mighty way. 
in a mighty way i want you to carry an anointing that will destroy spiritual laziness as i count seven that grace will come one two three four five six seven take it now 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 i release it receive it that fire take it take it take it take it take it take it, take it. let it come upon you grace extraordinary ministry extraordinary anointing take it like fire holy ghost move in power move in power outside outside let the power of god move grace let the fire burn let it ignite you take it 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 be separated let the desire for the ordinary die let the desire for the ordinary receive it it will come upon you like rain like rain like rain take take a photo for an extraordinary anointing for an extraordinary life set up may you command results may you command results results that can be reproduced again may you see the power of God in your ministry may you see the power of God in your life I bless you with a hunger for spiritual things a hunger that will separate you from fainting you've not given your life to Jesus Christ listen some of you this is where it starts tonight God is calling men to be serious hear me inside and outside there are some of you every time you hear the word of God like this you don't take what the man of God is saying seriously. God has been speaking to you. God has been speaking. Don't let today pass you by. There are some of you who gave your life to Christ. But truly you are not serious with God. You are not serious with his word. You are not serious with his life. The things of God are not, you are, you are not on fire. Tonight God is calling you. I'm going to count one to five and I want you to come and stand here. You've never given your heart to the Lord quickly. One, come and stand. God is speaking to you. Nobody will force you once I count five, just remain on your seat. Two, enough of this ordinary life. There is a higher realm. There is an extraordinary anointing inside or outside. Let, it, let the distance not be too far. Young or old, God brought you here tonight. God brought you here tonight. Some of you are sitting. The Holy Ghost is telling you, come out. The Holy Ghost is telling you, you are the one. You are the one the preacher is talking about. The Holy Ghost is talking to you. Quickly, please. Let's save time. The Holy Ghost has been speaking to you. Be serious with your spiritual life. Take the things of God. You have a great destiny. Many of us listen, but we are yet to make a decision. A decision keep coming god bless you one minute quickly don't let anybody mock you don't let people tell you you are over spiritual that's nonsense the people who are saying that will be failures in life guaranteed don't be ashamed to be on fire that's the way great people are made hallelujah 
those of you in front here i congratulate you for coming some of you are making your decision sister you will you will enter a level of hunger and fire today is your day it's god's time to visit you in a mighty way hallelujah we're out of time listen let me encourage you don't do what you are doing now emotionally please some of you will do it now when you go outside and you see your unbelieving people who have no respect for the things of god you get ashamed ashamed Let me pray for you all of you in front here if you can lift your hands up and let me pray with you i love you thank you for coming you are not ashamed i tell you this will be the beginning of an authentic spiritual journey i like you to shout it like your life depends on it say lord jesus i come before you i'm tired of going on this journey by myself this night I make a genuine commitment to walk with Jesus forgive me my sins I receive the remission of sins from today I'm a child of God I'm saved put your fire in my spirit make my life meaningful give me an extraordinary life use me for your glory I denounce sin and Satan. I break free from associations that keep me in the former life. I declare that I'm a child of God in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for these ones. They have come to indicate their interest to be part of your kingdom and to be very serious with you. My God, I pray that from today, let their lives change let something remarkable happen let habits be broken in the name of jesus the lord forgives you we free you from any guilt i set you free in the name of jesus christ no matter what has happened in the past past is past hallelujah a new creation in christ you will start again with the lord in jesus name now tomorrow listen tomorrow evening by five please look at me by five all right pastor jakes will be meeting with all of you please try try as much as possible just at the chapel book stand just come there and find somewhere and wait there pastor jakes will meet with you people we are going to follow you up for those who are not filled with the holy ghost who get to feel the holy ghost you can get some of the messages with the media some of you who don't have our messages they are all free we don't sell messages for now get them and sit down with them and let them build you. God bless you. Please follow the ushers. They'll have your details right now. Congratulations. Just give me two minutes and we're out of here. Those worshiping with us for the first time, please, I'd like you to leave your seat and come quickly. We honor you. We thank you for coming. Very quickly, very quickly. Those worshiping with us for the first time, if this is your first time of being here, we love you. We salute you. Please leave your seat and come out here. I have a prayer and a blessing for you. Koinonia, celebrate them as they come. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Koinonia, celebrate them. Whether you are inside or outside, just make haste to be here. Thank you. Young and old. Don't be afraid. We have a prayer for you. You'll never be the same. Thank you for coming. God brought you by himself. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, thank you so much for coming. This is Koinonia. Hallelujah. Put together by Eternity Network International. I assure you that your life will never be the same. Hallelujah. A fire will come into your spirit. You will change. Everyone around you will know you are changed. May you experience the goodness of God in your life. Hallelujah. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you. Thank you because you brought my brothers and sisters. Thank you because you have visited them tonight. Let this be the beginning of an authentic never ending spiritual journey i bless you with a hunger for the things of the spirit i bless you with a hunger for the word i command breakthrough in any area of your life you're trusting god for anyone who is sick among you be healed right now in the name of jesus thank you heavenly father
Thank you for watching our entire video today. If you feel you can bless someone, please join us and spread the gospel by sharing this video on your social media.